Hello and welcome to part two. Part two of Sloths in Space. We are playing as the Druskish Enlightened Kingdom of Sloths. And we are beginning our first steps into the stars. We left the trees and we are now reaching for the stars. And so the Sloth people, as we have met our first neighbor, to get everyone up to speed. We've met our first neighbor. We have uh, had an event that took place where peacefully, we are peaceful people. Very, We love aliens. We're peaceful. We're a little bit spiritual. Uh, we peacefully took over this black hole, which happened to have a mega structure. A little bit of a story behind that. Watch part one. And uh, we've been exploring some archaeological sites. We're, we're scouting. But we are on the outer rim of the galaxy. And so we're hoping to just find more friends. Now, our, our style here is to be taking our time. We want to uh, have the opportunity for questions and answers with chat here in Twitch. Uh, the the kind of the reason for playing in the first place was we were playing other games on Twitch, and I, I love Stellaris. We got talking about it. And many of our viewers have owned, owned the game or have been interested in the game, but there is quite the learning curve. And uh, it is a game I've played a good amount of. And so even though I'm not an expert, I do have uh, some knowledge to help with. And so we've been doing it together. So we're taking our time. A lot of this is his people's first time ever seeing the game. So we're, we're enjoying the storyline of it. We have focused our empire on leaders to be uh, our, our main emphasis. And so we have a number of leaders. We, of course, have Pastor Drewski, Drewski the pastor here, as our emperor. Emperor. Uh, He's a, he's, you know, he's got an eye for talent. He's a genius. I mean, look at all this. The champion of the people. Of course. Of course. But we also have some of our viewers here. Dutchy is our governor. Drek. Our, the, the scientist formerly known as head of research. Drek. Um, has been out there for a while. G. Ito is our minister of defense. Who just led his first successful battle against an anomaly. Uh, Baby Drewski is the crown prince. We do have Baby Drewski. He's been sick lately, so he hasn't been around to, to be piping up on stream. We also have Elias, Gurner, and then there's other leaders that we could possibly, re possibly recruit and rename. And so the adventure continues. Oops. Uh, the game we just got done playing, Mechabellum, uses right-click to pan the camera. I'm going to do that a lot on accident. And so we have several things also going on I didn't mention. We have a um, a pre-FTL civilization on this planet. We have learned a little bit about them. They are fanatic materialists. Now, we are spiritualists and we love aliens. And so we feel that it is in their best interest that they convert to our ways. So we actually have a, a espionage indoctrinate society mission uh, on its way to teach them how to properly uh, be. They are currently in the machine age, accelerating, though. They're, they're, someday they'll join us among the stars. And our origin, of course, we're on the, the planet Twitch in the system of uh, Amazon, or Prime. <laughs> but our origin is actually the fear of the dark. And so what that means is way back when, 100 years ago, we had a, a third of our species split away because a planet in our system was destroyed and they think it was an intentional hostile alien act and so we have a secondary group here they occupy the planet den they are our preppers they are uh they don't want to have anything to do with the outside and so they uh they're a little upset that we're trying to meet more aliens because they're thinking it's only going to stir up trouble and uh ivg was one of our viewers who was who was actually a scientist from den Joined us for a little while, was our, our supreme head of research, and then went back home. So, we've had all that. You can make a redeem of the rename. <laughs> that is not a bad idea at all. So that would be like a channel point redeem, you're saying, Aizen? Now, with this... Uh, this Yes, that, that's actually a really good idea. Um, it'll have to wait till later. I'm not going to spend the stream doing that. So perhaps on episode three, you'll have the opportunity to spend channel points to name a character. 
There's only so many. That, that is one of the things of the latest version of the game, is there's only so many leaders you can have. Now, this is very interesting. Our black hole here has a ruined matter decompressor, a mega structure with endgame end game implications. And uh, we discovered it. We said we wanted it. We were racing to claim it. This is why our, our empire is so snaky. And yet our neighbors claimed it first. Their capital's right next to it. Of course they did. We didn't know they were there. But they did claim it. We claimed the next door. And we were resolved to just make friends. Maybe someday they will, you know, benefit from it. So we indirectly benefit from it. But yet, our unruly, alien-fearing brethren on Den had an event. And they were sending a, a fleet of kamikaze ships towards the starbase here at Abaddon's Desvene. Uh, and they, and they, we had an option. We could intercept the fleet and stop it from happening, or we could let them go through. The station could be destroyed. And you can kind of see what decision we let, we had happen. We, we figured though, as being, even though we were xenophile, we love our alien neighbors and we're peaceful. We would never do anything to attack them. This could be a sign from the divine. And so we let it go through. Who are we? It would have been blasphemy to try to interfere with uh, the, the heaven's intention on destroying the, the station. And so we let it through and we claimed it immediately. And now it is ours. But unfortunately, they're a little bit suspicious. The, the Scannerian state are, in fact, they are suspicious to the point where they're harming our relations. We don't know if we can restore this. This is Grand Admiral difficulty. We are peaceful. These are a combination that is particularly uh, difficult, and so we hope to make friends again. Gildar, welcome back. Elias asks, can we only name the character after us or any rude name of our choice? Uh, knowing the stream, it's going to need to stick with uh, your own name, probably. That's a can of worms we don't want to open. But it won't be today. So, meanwhile, there is, not only do we have our planet, though, that planet has a plague. They currently have a plague going, plague sweeping across the planet. We do care for them, and so we're actually spending food, science, and unity to maintain them, uh, to help them through this crisis. And that's actually hurting our economy quite a bit. But I think we're about ready to progress again. We have um, construction complete. That's a colony ship. We have Baby Drewski at home assisting in research. Right there. Gurner, who is not only in chat, but he's in space, is scanning this, this system, the Helito system, which has a very interesting anomaly on it. There's a missing planet. We will have to check that out. That is going to be very likely that is today's story arc. And before we introduce anyone else, something else has popped up. That me, thanks for the follow. I'm going to read this. The inside of the Erasian cruiser. There, there are precursing, precursor civilizations that occupied this region of space millions of years ago. We are researching it and finding their secrets. The inside of an Erasian cruiser found orbiting Kodraka 3 contains the dead remains of its full crew complement. Most of them perished as a result of the Javarian pox that would later render the Erasians extinct. But some of the crew were gunned down by marine guards while trying to reach the escape pods. According to the recovered log files, the captain issued strict orders to quarantine the ship after the outbreak became apparent. That is an interesting find. We have gained some artifacts, 10 artifacts. A, in addition, a specifically an Erasian artifact. We need a total of six to really solve the mystery, as well as some research points. Very interesting, very productive. Jito says he was debating with himself to restart Stellaris again, but with not one DLC, but not one DLC. Do you think it's worth it? There actually has been, and I and I I wish I could remember the names of this the YouTubers because props to them. They put a ton of work into it. There's been a couple of YouTubers who have just recently gone back and uh, made like playing Stellaris with no DLC and then kind of passing judgment on that, like kind of deciding. And uh, I think the general the general consensus is that it's not great. It's it's not great. Uh, I loved original Stellaris, but now that it's been patched with DLCs in mind, you don't have the original Stellaris and you'd have like a barebone version of what you should have with the 
DLC. Like they've changed so much of the game. If you were if you've been there since the beginning, you'd had uh, different FTL methods. You had uh, the the pops moving around on the maps on the planets, things like that. There's, it's a different game. And so now, if you just play with no DLC, it's this game minus content as opposed to the old game. I think you could do no DLC and actually roll back to the original patch. And that would be curious, but it was also pretty rough. And so that would be more for the nostalgia of somebody who, who's been there before. I would do that, but I don't. I wouldn't recommend it for somebody else. If, if you were to play, I would say there are oftentimes sales. Uh, Humble Bundle has had some Stellar sales. You get like a whole bunch of content there. Yeah, the amount of DLCs, uh, and 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 there there is so many DLC that we're at the point where either you get the whole thing on sale or you might just not bother. Now now, with the caveat, Paradox, I applaud them. They maintain a game I love, and the, and in order to do that, they do need money, so they do need DLCs. I don't I don't begrudge them that. I applaud though, the fact that they make it easy. If I were to play with a friend, in fact, I have uh, my my father often plays Stellaris with me. Uh, he doesn't have all the DLCs, but I do. And so as long as I host it, he can play with me and have all the DLCs. He can play with those DLCs, play using them, not just having them in the game. And so they if you have a friend who has a DLC, you can play with them. Uh, if you have... Um, oh, well, you gotta have friends. But uh, <laughs> the, I, I hope that one day they kind of go the... the Crusader Kings or Europa Universal Universalis route where they, you know, if we're going to keep doing this, the barrier of entry is so high that you almost would be better served by doing the subscription route. Now, they've, they've experimented with it on their other games. I think they're not against doing it. But if I could pay, if, I, if I'm looking at paying, what, 200 bucks to, to play the whole game, all right, if I'm looking at that with all the DLC, I don't know what, it is, what it's at now. It might be higher. More? Rounding up, you know, 300 bucks if it's... I don't know what it's at now. Um, obviously, I'd recommend buying on sale. But if I if there's no sale, what if I could just pay five bucks a month to get everything until there's a sale? I think that's decent. How good, bad is the experience if you only play NPC enemies? I, I am playing with the NPCs right now. I'm not playing multiplayer. In fact, in fact... Um, I recommend the game is, I think the game is more fun, uh, either cooperative with a friend or just PVE. Once you enter PVP, the element of the game that is storyline, the element of the game that's ex exploration, discovery, experimentation, uh, the role playing goes right out the window when you throw, start playing PVP. If you want to do that, that's fine. That's not how I want to play. And so I actually don't think you play the game for PvP. I think you play the game to to roleplay a sandbox of, of building an empire and, and 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 following its story. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, I've, now, oftentimes I play, you can have like 16 people play, and you could form a federation. You could be all together playing PvE on the same side. That's great. They've even created a beta branch of the game where you can have a, a literal cooperative play and, I've, and I have a current game with my father doing this where you can actually play as literally the same empire not just allies two empires side by side but the same empire and uh, play together and that's what I do with my, my father and so it, it makes great for teaching the game um, but but that's what I would emphasize I emphasize the PvE aspect and, and sharing that with a friend is, is pretty good but one thing you do have to be careful of is is because of the real-time nature of the game, if the other person is wanting to pause to deal something and you're not having anything going on, it can be tough to, uh, to, to have the patience to play with other people, right? If, if you're playing PvP, you might all agree nobody pauses. You just have a, here's the set speed, and we're just going to play at that speed. But when, you know, when you're playing with a friend who's just learning, you better be ready that you're going to be paused a lot. <laughs> All right, so I don't remember what, what our, all of our scientists are doing. Elias, I don't remember what you were doing. Uh, I will have you go work on archaeological sites, but maybe you're just heading out yonder to go and explore the great unknown. Why don't you go check out the anomaly while everyone else moves, moves forward? So Drek... 
Drek and Gurner will continue the exploration forward. Gurner is our new head of research, by the way, Drek, if you were curious. And, and the irony is that technically, we were talking about being a smarter genius. Technically, you'd be better at being the head of research. Gurner is, is just a young cub. Uh, only 29. No stats being added. You, you see the little icons with little yellow uh, symbols at the bottom of them? The yellow symbol means that this is something that applies to the council, which applies to the empire. Gurner has none. What does Gurner bring to the table that Drek does not? Well, Gurner happens to be a pacifist. Drek, you are like me, a spiritualist. You you and Jito and I, we were all spiritualists. I couldn't put you back on there because we have factions. In our empire, we actually have the Committee of Faith and Values. We have the National Prosperity Board and the Alien Reform Lobby. We've got three factions in our government. Two of them were not represented. And if I threw you back on the on the council, sir, uh, we would we would have actually made these count these groups more upset. And so they are represented on the council. They are happier because of it, and that's what Gurner's doing for us. Eisen, you are. That's awesome. Awesome. That's why you've been so so productive for us. Why are you in the kitchen again? I missed most of that. <laughs> All right, let's let's actually unpause for real this time. Now we've been trying to save up influence to actually start claiming things. Looks like our next get, our next claim was because we wanted to get out to this. We found a relic world. A relic world is a world that is uh, not only a, a ruined world of, of former civilization, but on the plus side, it's actually a massive scientific bonus. It's got all these ruins, which any scientist here will get a 15% research bonus of each type with an additional 15% once we unlock this uh, central spire on the city. 30% more science happens on this planet. And so we are very excited Plus, it's, uh, it's very habitable for everybody, and it's a huge planet. Elias, I don't remember what you're doing. <laughs> you're researching something. So you're, you're going up there. You're doing that. Unpause. So our first order over here is we're, we're going to head over to the ruined world. Along the way, we're getting the system with 11 energy, which is useful. We don't have much. And then there's this wonderful sounding system with 34 minerals. But when we got here, it did mention that there were crystallized rocks in this very rich asteroid field and movement could be seen. So we're going to mine this, but we might just need to find out, uh, you know, what's going on. Why, why is that of note? Meanwhile, Drek, the bizarre blanket entire continents on Shiat 3 are blanketed. I got a phone call here, but I'm, I'm going to let that ride. Blanketed in a strange growth that seems at odds with the rest of the planet's flora. Okay. Ah, this is a tropical world. Far from home, but we want that's our type. We being sloths, we enjoy that. So Drex can check that out for us. And the plague continues. As the plague continues to ravage the planet, the number of dead and dying is staggering. There is no cure. Further suffering can only be alleviated, not prevented. One of the pops on the planet has died. Now, they do have 24 pops. Or had 25. But, uh... Yeah, it's still 24. So they're, they're suffering, but they are still there. We're making some more colonies. Another contact. We've received... Oh my! Oh my! We've received communi a communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that call themselves the Holy Laganchus Empire. They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in with the communications of another empire we're contacted. Well, the Scanurian state apparently has been wheeling and dealing because not only this empire... But it looks like three total empires now know of our existence. We hope that they're friends. Well met, alien. I represent the Holy Lagan Chu's Empire, led by the illustrious Arch Prophet Bongnog. 
We rule our region of space under a divine mandate. So do we. So do we. And so long do you, as you do not interfere with our spiritual affairs, we look forward to learning more about your culture. Well, we greet you in peace. More friends. And a similar thing. I won't read all of them. But a similar thing has happened with these other two. These guys are xenophile but fanatic militarists. So they'll say something slightly different, but they've got their uh, warriors. We're saying peace, though. And the Dorblon Mandate, Egalitarian and Xenophile, they like aliens too. Perhaps we can all get along. Incoming transmission. Council agenda ready. Oh my. Now, a pro tip. There's a reason why when we met one, we met them all. And Dutchie, we love aliens. Stop that. We love aliens. <laughs> we are Xenophile. There's a reason why these guys all met us at the same time. And this is a uncommon but not rare circumstance. And that is one of these. Remember when we picked our starter origin that we were afraid of the dark. We were afraid of something causing that planet to be destroyed. One of these empires, when the, when the game rolled them, it picked a empire that actually has, has formed a federation with other empires in its region. And so they, this is actually a federation. At least it should be unless they all just happen to have the same color and they're all happen to be next to each other looks like they're at war with uh our neighbors yeah they all are and we don't know we don't have enough intel we don't have enough espionage to know that they're part of this federation but this guy is federation builder and so i suspect maybe these guys are the heads of the, the head of the federation but these three are a package deal two of them are likely smaller empires because the third one's like the main the main one but it looks like all three of them, as a federation, are at war with the Scannerian state. We don't know who's going to come out ahead of that, but we do know that they want to be friends. They're asking to be an em have an embassy. And we like aliens, so we're actually going to say okay to both of that. There's no downside for us, aside from a little bit more intel to be had. So they can find out a little bit more about us, we can find out a little bit more about them. But it does improve relations. That's what we're after. Also, our agenda is ready. Ready. We did some leadership training. So for 10 years now, we're going to have an extra experience bonus. But immediately, everyone who is level 1 to 4 gets a free level. And anyone higher gets, gets a 2,000 experience boost. So this is going to be everybody leveling up. Before we go to that... Let's pick our next thing. It will likely be to expand the council. So your government, if you're new to the game, this is a new feature in the game. To have a council, to have a government like this. This is as a result of the latest DLC, but it's part of the base game now as well. And so just more agendas and things are, are available in the DLC. Uh, and so we are getting to choose, now that we've accomplished one government agenda as politicians what do we want to do next i think the next thing we want to do is expand the council because that would mean we can have an extra a fourth person on the council getting bonuses for the empire so we're going to expand the council there are some other things we can generate more unity generate happiness uh trade value various things but uh, expanding the council is a permanent buff we're going to work on that all right now, if you'll see, this plus sign means everybody has a level to choose. We need to go down the whole list, starting with Pastor Drewski. Apparently, oh, there we go. I don't know why I didn't show the rest. Uh, so, as a scientist, we have these veteran levels. He just hit level four. We have these veteran levels to choose from. But he's not acting out as a scientist. He is our leader. So he's not going to be exploring. He's not going to be analyzing. But he is on the council. And this researcher bonus gives an empire-wide research speed buff. This is the only one that will help us, and it is pretty good. So 7% more buff uh, while he's on the council, and he is only going to be on the council. Oh, wait, 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 that's Drek. No, Drek! I thought, you look, you, you all look alike. I thought that was Drewski. Yeah, why is it only showing that? Oh, well. There we go. You can be a, a researcher too, Drek. Someday, someday, maybe you will let you on the council. 
<laughs> it would have been great to have you not be a researcher, though. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll let you on. I had thought... I had thought I was on Drewski, not Drek. Now we have Duchy. Duchy, our governor, is not on the council, but has several council buffs as well. You can see the little X and grayed out. We're not getting the benefit of those. We could, on the council, give him a, a visionary thing. The whole empire would get up pop upkeep reduction. That means that they don't eat as much. They don't use as much consumer goods and more trade. But I don't know if he's actually going to be on the council or not. These are decent, but he's not there yet. And right now, we'll probably get more out of him if we have him uh, generating more resources. So we're actually going to do that. Thank you, Dr thank you, Dutchie. Gito, our admiral, who is on the council. <laughs> yes, big smile. He he could be a rebel, but we we do not grant him the rank of master. <laughs> Uh, Gito, so as a admiral, he has a separate thing. So he can be an aggressor. This is weapon damage on ships, fire rate. A tactician gives uh, hull points, a chance to disengage. And if the fleet must do an emergency escape, uh, the time spent missing in action is reduced. This is defensive, this is offensive. Or if you're on the council, we can make all military ships build 10% faster. He is on the council. And we are relatively peaceful, so we're not going to have a standing navy. If suddenly we're at war where we need to build one, building them faster is important. So we're actually going to keep with the meta game of the desk jockey, the desk uh, job for the for Jito, as opposed to out there in the field. All right, Baby Drewski is currently assisting research, and I think. We're going to focus on that so that he can continue to assist research and get more out of it. We're going to bonus bonus research. All right, that me. Thanks for hanging. We'll see you later. Duchy, yeah, you're not on the council, but you are governing our planet, our capital. You should be proud. Elias, you are heading out to to scan more so we might continue doing the exploring um yeah we'll, we'll have you explore that survey speed anomaly speed and when you do finish a survey you get us a little unity this is this is nice this is nice gurner head of research you are on the council but this is only level three so you don't have a veteran trait to pick from um the other nice thing about you is that you're actually our seventh leader i think but because you are under level four and you're so oh so eager to be part of the game, uh, this leader does not use capacity while under four. So so we actually have seven leaders, but you're not counting towards it until you level up again. But we're gonna keep you at checking out science things. I was hoping that you'd get some sort of uh, empire thing because you are on the council. All right, we got caught up there. And now we must pause. There's an evasive exofungus. After intense study... Oh, yep, this is Drek. Being useful. A useful engine. After intense study and sampling of the growth blanketing entire biospheres on Shiat 3, Drek reports that the substance is not native to the planet, but rather an invasive fungal life form of unknown origin. The fungus seems on, feeds on biomatter, choking out existing plant life and enveloping terrain. Any future settlers on the planet would have to deal with routinely burning back the exofungus. It's unknown at this point if it can be entirely eradicating. That's worrying. But we get some science. Yeah, so, so the planet now... Life form encountered. The planet, which is the size 19, it's a tr tropical world. We like the planet, but it now has this, this modifier. It has an exofungus infestation. It's going to take longer to build things. It's harder to live there, so less habitability. But... A huge jump in society research. So any any research done on the planet will be uh, given quite the jump. Particularly for the society variety. We also have more of our ancient mining drones. It was. It was a cheerful readout of the planet killing fungus. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> oh my, we need to buy some more of this. Okay, so looks like... 
Gurner has discovered more of our ancient mining drones, friends. If you guys recall, we already had some over here in Cyrak. Now we have more. So 2,000 strength. Our fleet is uh, not designed to be some, some powerhouse, and so uh, we can't quite compete with that. Actually, we need to change our fleet design, don't we? These guys... So, yesterday when we played, we defeated a, an anomaly that was all shields. The anomaly had no armor, it, had, it was entirely shields and health. And so we equipped our fleet with missiles, so that the missiles could penetrate shields. 100% shield penetration on this missile, it's a little green number on the bottom. Meaning we could skip the entire, miss, the entire shield portion of the, the enemy and go straight to the hull. Now, now that these uh, the next threat are these mining drones, they have no shields. They do not have a blue bar. They have an orange bar. Their shields are zero, but they do have a ton of armor. In fact, more armor than anything else. And so we need to refit our ships to better handle the situation now. So we're going to change from missiles to lasers. Normally, I like to have a nice balance, but we're going to do that. And while we're here, we did just get... Oh, we don't have the, the power for it. it. Might be researching power. But we did get the technology for cloaking field. So we might be sneaky Romulan types shortly. But for the moment, we're going to do that. Technology. Yeah, we're not researching better, better power source yet. So that's what we're stuck with. Yeah, we can be cheerful about the planet killing fungus so long as we're not living there. Okay, commercial pact. The problem with... Okay, a commercial pact would make both sides a lot of money. And we're not making much money. So this could be really beneficial. The downside is that to maintain a commercial pact, it costs a monthly fee of influence. We're not making much influence. We're at 3.79 a month. We need influence to claim all of this. Ah, camera. All of this and more. And, uh... The longer it takes, the longer it takes. Somebody else is going to be on the other end here, and they're going to start claiming it instead of us. So I like the idea of making treaties. We will once we've claimed the land. But for the moment, we're prioritizing the expansion. Most of our colonies are brand new. We're not really getting anything from any of them except for our capital. But once they start going, we're going to have to have some specialized factory worlds to build these consumer goods so we stop being in the negative. All right, and we finished our new uh, defense, meaning we can we can scrap out this old one. Construction complete. Normally, I'd look to repurpose it, but we, can we have a capacity on star bases. And this is actually, we're at max capacity, and eventually we're going to want another star base somewhere else. Incoming transmission. So we actually are going to delete that star base, and we now have the new star base here. Incoming oh. transmission. These guys really like us. So, the new na the new friends, the, the, the neighbors that are currently at war with our, our current friends, they're actually protective. Boy, we, we've made some progress here. Um, that's, that's great to hear, but these guys are offering an association with their federation. This would make us have a non-aggression pact with all members of the federation and improve relations with all members of the federation. The downside, this federation does not get along with our actual neighbors and their, our actual neighbors might be upset by this. Eisen, I hope so. Like, I, this is, it's such a great game because every time you play, it's a whole new adventure. And so if you want to start your own playthrough, I, I recommend it, right? Like, it's, it's wonderful. Here's what we're going to do. We love aliens so much. We're xenophile. And we love the fact that they love us. We will accept association into their, uh, empire, into their, into their federation, though it's not joining it. We'd, we'd actually kind of like to make our own federation someday. 
but we'll take association to have the friends. And then we're going to probably bribe these guys again. These other guys. It's actually... What happened? These guys used to be bird people. They must have a different a different leader joining them. Um, we're, we're, we're likely going to bribe them to make them not mad about this. Because this is... This is uh, basically, we're, we're cozying up with the neighboring... Their enemies. Okay, but... Oh no, do they... They're in a different federation? Oh no. Or is it the same one? They have different colors though. This is a different color scheme. There's our bird people. Where did you go? Okay, you're just... Sorry, I didn't notice. Um, all right, they are. The, we we kept talking to these guys because these guys have actually invaded their home world. <laughs> these guys, they're all purple. I'm sorry, they're all purple. Okay, so there are three purple groups that are all in this alliance against this purple group, but not this one with the gear because that's that one. It's the the infinity purple. Wow. All right. Infinity sign purple. Now we look at the planet. We can see they actually still have their capital. But I believe it's it's getting bombarded as we speak. Um, yeah, the situation is grim for our former neighbors. I think they're getting conquered. <laughs> it's okay. We just made friends with, the, 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 our, with our new neighbors. <laughs> right? We're on the right side of history. Look at them go. They've got a colony ship trying to head out to 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 make, you know, a, hope against hope. They're, they're doing homeworld. They're going to go try to find Carrick is burning. It's literally an arid world. It's getting bombarded. It is burning and and they they're sending out the mothership to find a new home. I don't have enough influence to spend for two construction ships. It's going to annoy me that we have a second ship not being productive. Yep, there's, because we are associ have an association status, we actually have a lot of intel on them. So we can see them, they can see us. Transmission. Or transmissions. They really want these commercial packs, and I'd love to do it. I just can't lose the influence at the moment. But we will do it embassies. They don't cost influence. Is the plan to actually... It will be soon. I think we caught it just as it happened. Uh, you don't know much about Stellaris, by the way. Is your empire big compared to others at the moment? Actually, no. I would even go so far to say we are behind. So, so we're playing Grand Admiral, which means you need to be on the ball to keep up, right? Like, this is the hardest difficulty. And we're playing Peaceful, so we don't have the ability to, to conquer, at least on a whim. Maybe someday we do, uh, but not really just like with the goal of just conquering everybody and so we need to expand but we've been kind of held back because we were we were doing inefficient moves we're trying to catch up on that now all four of our planets that are not our capital the top one is our capital twitch the other four they're all new new planets they're not really producing anything this one's got a little bit of food going this one's trying to get some uh industry going with consumer goods that's your uh Fridges and microwaves to keep the people happy thing, right? And then we're colonizing another one. This one has, has just been, been colonized. We're not getting any benefits, so we're still in the infancy stages. But what we're hopeful for is that we've claimed some key things. We've claimed this megastructure over here. That this matter decompressor, if we can repair it, it, this once skirted natural law by reclaiming matter from the black hole in the system. Basically, it will suck an infinite amount of minerals back out of the infinitely dense minerals in this uh, in this black hole. So we would get a massive amount of minerals for the rest of the game 
later. We don't have it now. We also have this planet, which gives a lot of science. We don't have it yet. And there's a lot of territory that we might claim and benefit from, but we don't have it yet. And so we're, we're hopeful that we'll have time to capture all this. There was a real danger that these neighbors would declare war on us, but it looks like our new friends are taking care of that for us. Have you played Total War? I love Total War. I I have played, um, let's see, I started with Total, uh, Total War, uh, what was the medieval Total War? Like two? Uh, there was a, a really fun Middle Earth mod with that back in the day. Uh, played that quite a bit. Empire played that, loved the ships, the ship combat. It was really, really wonky, but I loved it anyway. Um, Shogun 2, Rome 2, horrible release, but they've patched quite a bit of it. Uh, and then I've played Warhammer, Total War Warhammer 1 and 2. I, I can't afford the third one. Um, but uh, the the I love Total War as a concept, but it's frustrating that going on this long, they still can't make it user-friendly. Like, it's, it's a horrible user experience. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Total War, I love it, right? And, and and actually, Sir Heed, every once in a while, he'll be online and we play together. We've played co-op Total War uh, quite a bit. Uh, Day From Above as well. Um, the ones I, the different ones I was just listing. Uh, it, it's great. I, I actually really like the meta game better. As you can kind of see, I, I focus on the economy side of things rather than the combat. But I love the, the Total War. My problem is that the AI is so much better than me in Total War. Like, like in the combat, I, I lose all the time. So I try to focus on economy to overwhelm the enemy because I'm just that bad. <laughs> but I have fun doing it. I have a lot of fun doing it. Stephen Hawking, yeah, I, maybe, maybe. I like the description that it, it's uh, this matter decompressor once skirted natural law. They're, they're acknowledging that, hey, this is impossible, but we're putting it in our game anyway. So... There's other mega structures that exist. If you're a fan of science fiction, uh, my particular, like the most famous being a Dyson sphere, that's in the game. You can make Dyson spheres. Total War Warhammer 2. I do have Total War Warhammer 2. I have it. Uh, I enjoy. I, I I I couldn't quite get good at the 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 main campaign of it so instead i end up doing the mortal empires or, or whatever it is where you have the two maps together and i really like that um whole lot of fun doing that it does get to the point though when either you're you're winning but you can only have so many armies and then the, the ai just swarms you and you can't be everywhere at once and that's frustrating or you're winning and it's just it, it's redundant like you've already won the game but now you have to go conquer the next hundred cities and it takes forever to do and you're just like i'm done uh, or you've lost at the beginning of the game like uh, generally speaking the, the beginning of the game is the hardest part the most fun part and then the excitement wears off when you are stable and now able to conquer other bigger groups immortal empire is someone is that is that from the third one is that what they're calling the third one when you have all the maps from all three together. Yeah, Dutchie, you get it. it you, it's it's a, an incredible game, but it's really tough to actually finish. Incoming transmission. Um, but I just never could get into the third one. So like, and, and that's fine. That's fine because I've had I've had a whole lot of fun with the others, and I still do. So once again, we're going to reject the research agreements. We want all of it. We just can't afford it because it costs influence to maintain. Yeah, the beginning's so fun. It every turn in those games, every turn matters. Every little action matters. One wrong step and you got to restart. <laughs> it's so intense. Okay. Let's see what's happening. Oh, there's the bombardment. You guys are asking. Carrick is burning. So the planet is is being bombarded. Eisen, thank you! For the Buy New Games fundraiser. <laughs> Buy New Games fundraiser. Thank you. We're on our way. <laughs> Almost all the DLCs. 
if we were talking about Paradox DLCs, I don't want to get into um, war. Is it? It's a, is war gaming. I don't want to get into war gaming's DLCs because those are just as bad. Except they know all of the DLCs they're going to have from the beginning, and they're just like, no, you just can't play this. You just. It's not like Paradox. Paradox. They're making it as they. They're making it up as they go. They're having fun making new things as they go. Total War. They're like, oh yeah. Here's the pie, and now we're taking all of it except for the slice away from it. Now we're gonna give you give it back to you piecemeal. <laughs> oh yeah, and playing it co-op, you can play competitive, but playing co-op is so much fun in Total War because if the other guy has a big battle, oftentimes what we would do is you can share units in the battle. You can you can cooperatively control the units, and so he would pass to me all the cavalry, or I would do the same, or the the air units, you know, the dragon. And, uh, and so you could micromanage those units to, to flank and surround an attack. So much fun. And then they're not yours, so if they die, you're not too worried about it. <laughs> Alright, so the planet is just beginning to be bombarded. You see the devastation is, is at 1%. If it reaches 100%, the planet will surrender. Or they might invade with their armies. Now, it just so happens that our neighbors... We didn't really know this, but they actually are necromancers. <laughs> I didn't check out, you know, all their details. They are necromancers, though. They have a dread encampment with necromancers, meaning as a battle were to progress, they have undead armies. And so they would defend themselves with the, with skeleton armies. So most likely, if I were them bombarding, I would just, you know, nuke it from orbit. Like, we, you don't want to mess with that. <laughs> but these guys are in trouble. We also have a new contact. A communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire. The... Ixladar Star Collective. Oh my, that's you down there. Pausing. So, you can just see the borders. You see the purple and the gray separating. Our neighbors, they were not nearly as big as we had feared. In fact, it looks like they got pinched between these guys. And so, they're they're in very much in trouble. And we just met these the Star Collective. Now, what's very interesting... This is a different sort of empire than we've encountered. This is not a traditional empire. This is a hive mind. Now, are they the Zerg? We don't know. <laughs> but they are a hive mind, so they're just out consciousness. And so their, their population are drones, things like that. And uh, they're saying, we are the Star Collective. We speak as one. The hive mind has taken note of your presence. We will observe for now. Our future actions will depend upon whether you are a threat an opportunity for expansion, or an un unforeseen variable. And we like aliens, even weird ones that look like some sort of tick, I don't know. But we like them. We like them just the same. We're xenophiles, so we're going to say we wish for nothing for nothing but to be friends. Yes, Jito, I knew you could play against each other, but the problem is one of us would probably get upset and, and quit playing. <laughs> right? Like... As, as much fun as, as, as I have playing games like Mechabellum and we're competitive games, I am still competitive. And so it's it's when it's over and over with a friend, it's really tough to keep it keep it friendly. <laughs> we like you even though you are ticks. <laughs> Very diplomatic introduction. You are you are spot on right there. We like you in spite of you. <laughs> Yeah, the archers and artillery in, Do in Total War, that's another fun one. Because you can actually manually fire artillery, uh, like instead of the whole squad, you can actually manually fire a specific one, aim it, fire. Basically, you're goofing off while your friend's fighting for his life in, those, in that game. <laughs> Incoming transmission. Okay, they want to have an embassy. Fair enough. We'll be friends. You can also see... Now, this is the the, Vic, the, the, the allies that we are friends with. Why? We can look at their war. You can see, like, their status on various relations. So they have their Cosmic Compact. We now have enough information to know their, their federation. They call themselves the Cosmic Compact. Here's the other members. The other two that we met. We're also, they're also at war with our neighbors, and we can actually see they are the, it says offensive war, they are the attackers, 
and they have accumulated a 13% war exhaustion level. That's their population saying, we're done with this, right? And so what that means is they have lost some ships along the way, you know, negative publicity, that sort of thing. And so 13% of the way to the 100% when the other side could force peace. However, overall, they have actually been winning because the other side, our neighbors, the defenders, they have a 25% war exhaustion. So they are much further along on the we're ready to surrender track. And so uh, we can see who's winning. We can see that our new friends are winning against our old friend. Our old friend who happened to uh, donate this, this system to us. All right. Seismic disturbances. This is this is one of our new colonies. Brand new colony. Right there, Cider Prime. Tropical world. There have been many reports of unexplainable seismic disturbances on Cider Prime. Tremors can be felt across the planet, and many of our settlements have suffered damage. While investigating the earthquakes, our scientists discovered a vast network of subterranean caverns. The deepest of these caverns is home to some kind of indigenous civilization, and they appear to be tunneling towards the surface. Ground vibrations from our settlements may have triggered this behavior, but we cannot be certain. There's no telling how these aliens will react when they spill out of their tunnels and encounter our colonists. We will have to deal with the situation. Situation log updated. All right, so we have a little notification. There's a situation here, and we have a choice to make. Dutchie says, don't trust them. Dutchie, we love aliens. <laughs> We're xenophile. <laughs> Why did I put you in charge of a planet? <laughs> Okay, so but we do have a choice, right? So subterranean civilization, we need to find some way to communicate with the aliens. Perhaps we could find a way to coexist with their civilization. We have to choose. We can either establish communications that will use society research to do so, or we could do a per preemptive strike. The aliens digging their way to the surface is a threat, and we could do a preemptive strike. That would that would use an engineering research, significantly more of it, by the way. Now I think in our role play here, it's clear. We will make communications, but but that doesn't mean that it's the wisest course of action, right? Like, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe I do, but but most of us don't know what's going to happen, but it does fit our character to establish communications. So we shall do so. And that's going to take a little bit of time, and it'll be taken away from our research towards population growth. And that's unfortunate, because that's one of the most important texts. Checking out our other planets. I'm all. Whenever I look at planets, does a diplomatic preemptive strike? <laughs> when the bombs explode, we made sure to put some confetti in there. <laughs> um, when I check my planets, you don't always have to do something. There's little. There's little notifications here that there's a spot for building. I could build a building. I don't have a lot of resources. Um, and, and what you primary look for whenever you pop up this window is these guys right here. This icon with the little hard hat. This is how many jobs you have available. There are two jobs available and there's two housing available, meaning the population can grow twice and I don't need to do anything. It will automatically use a house, automatically use a job. I can look at the jobs to find out what they are. Those jobs would be farming jobs. We have two out of the four here. And we, we can use that. We're not great on food right now because IVG left us. He was giving us a lot of food. And so um, we're just going to leave it. We're just going to leave it. Now I'm going to look down the next one. He has four jobs. Don't need to do anything. But this guy only has one job available. So we might consider doing something. And that's this is a brand new colony. He His next job will be a colonist. So we might consider something. If we look at the planet, there's not a lot going on here. There's not many districts for for farming for minerals even this generator district is not that many and so this might be a secondary industry district for us because again we don't have much industry so i'm going to go ahead and place the order for that we're not going to benefit from it for some time i need to edit out the maybe i do know for the for youtube <laughs> well i have i have played quite a bit of the game it's it's you and your experience this this is your journey through the game. These aren't random about every... No, no, okay, so, so there are... 
many events are scripted. Many other events have a percent chance of different outcomes. So you don't actually know, you can do the same choice and not know what's going to happen. Because there's, there's two or maybe multiple, three or four possible outcomes of the events. Now, only through trial and error. Now, of course, there's online wikis you can look up. But but through trial and error, I, I pretty much know the ones that are always the same. Just from just from sheer number of playthroughs. But uh, it doesn't mean that I always am going to make the right choice here because I'm going to role play it. Right. So we're going to try to stick to what our sloth people would do and uh, try to stay faithful to that. Because you guys don't know. And that's more fun. I don't know if we've ever actually tried to communicate with our neighbors. Diplomacy. Yeah, we can't really talk to them much. It's not like a normal pre-FTL, because these guys are just here by choice. It's a storyline planet, not like the other group. Incoming transmission. Ah, oh, several things just happened up here. We weren't paying attention. A non-aggression pact with our hive mind. The ticks down here. I don't mind the idea of a non-aggression pact. We don't actually share a border, so that's, they're not really a threat yet. Though the border's closed. They're only three jumps away, and the, the, the guy in between is dying. Um, but it costs, once again, it costs influence. And I just don't want to pay the price. So we're going to decline. But this is a problem. Our neighbors that we like so very much. I mean, look at them. They're blue birds. They have declared us their rival. Now, there might be some reasons for that. But I think the biggest one, if we had intel, it would tell us. I think the biggest one is because we are friends with their enemies. Um, and so they are hostile towards us. And now they've declared us their rival. They gain, when you declare a rival, you're not actually declaring war. But what you do gain, you gain influence because you're being a bully and, and that's influencing others around you. Um, but there's also some benefits that you'd have. Certain elements in the game might give you damage done versus your rivals because your people are just that much more motivated to take out these guys that you historically don't like. We were hoping to stay friends. Um, we're not going to declare war or anything. But now we're actually really rooting that these guys go away. <laughs> that these guys get taken out by, by our, our new friends. Because we don't want to have a rival on our border. We, we just... We're not building to protect ourselves from that. Now, as far as building goes, um, it would be nice to take out these... Oh, my. Oh, my. Something's happened. This this, this is our, our pre-FTL buddies. The Kareem civilization that we've been spying on and helping guide to, to know the light. Our work to contain the spread of the plague is attracting attention. The local population has begun to speak of demons, unholy beings who have appeared among them to combat the disease using profane magic. <laughs> Something like this was bound to happen. Um, so we gain, we gain a little bit of technology. They, they've kind of noticed us, so, so their awareness level will likely increase here eventually too their awareness of us being out here. But what is interesting, yeah, we like aliens, they don't. We're trying to make them like aliens. We're trying to guide their society to like us. They're not there yet. Uh, but we do gain a new society insight technology. Now these things are unique that you can only get through in through studying ancient people or, or, or primitive people. And so we're gonna check that out here momentarily. Uh, it'll actually be, I can look at it now, but we're, we're trying to do the communications. We're, we're doing all these different things. The next time we come up with a tech, we'll see what this new society tech is. And it, again, it's unique. You don't normally get it in the pool of technology, uh, that you can, that you can get. So when I say getting it, it's, it's making it available. Oh, another major thing. The matriarch. This must be... There it is. Found it. The Matriarch.
The matriarch, a creature of legend, swims languorously between the gas giants dotting the Testristra system. With tentacles longer than a Druskish battleship, her gargantuan proportions defy all of our previous encounters with organic life. The creature's magnificent glowing hide stands out startlingly against the void of space. She appears to be quite old, remarkably so, a veritable ancient, covered end to end in battle scars and strange growths. A gigantic, unexploded proton torpedo. There it is. Is lodged in the venerable matriarch's back, and the fractured remains of ships in the system speak of what manner of fate befell any vessels that strayed too close. It is the white whale. And we pet it. <laughs> Incredible. Now, before I hit that, let's let's have a look at the system because as soon as we unpause, our ship is is jumping to an immediate emergency hyperspace. They're leaving. And so we'll lose vision of this. But what we can see right now, there are three planets that are colonizable. One already is a Gaia world, the, the, a paradise planet, a perfect planet in a size 16. So it's a medium size, perfect planet. There's a size 14 Arctic, which we don't really like. But then another size 16 Gaia. So this is an amazing, amazing, this is a game changing star system. Along with, you can see there's this wreckage, right? And potentially other things to be found. But we had to we had to book it out of there. Incredible. We have made first contact with mysterious aliens in that system. For now, we've codenamed them the Alpha Aliens. Until we can find out more about them, if they possess a language, we must decipher it in order to establish communications. Interesting. So we will... Oh. We will probably... We, we can scan them now, we can scan them later, but, but to do so would use one of our envoys. And currently, one envoys with the pre-FTL people, our, our little buddies, we're trying to help them out. Two of them are with our neighbors. One is trying to improve relations, the other is spying on them. Now we weren't really planning on doing much with spying on them. Oh, that's, can't even see them really. There we go. Uh, we weren't really planning on doing much with spying on them. It was more just to see their borders. And now we can see more of it. So I think we'll we'll cancel the spy network in order to study the alpha aliens. Need to bring a cookie? You could probably pet it once. Yes, yes. I mean, but which one which one was that? Did we lose a <gasps> Did we lose a scientist? We had four. It's not saying one's missing. Did I miss the notification somebody had died? Oh no. Oh no. It was the jellyfish that did it. We showed up in the system and it instantly killed us. We didn't make it to hyperspace. All right, who was it? Drewski's still with us, baby Drewski. Drek is still with us. Elias is still with us. It was Gurner. Gurner is gone. Gurner, I'm so sorry. We need a new head of research. It could be Dutchie. Sadly, everyone here is spiritual along with everyone else. Let's who else is possible to Yeah, everyone we have one Jesus. <laughs> we have one person that we could bring in that would be that would be a xenophile and make our, our factions happy. But we don't want to be over our leader capacity. Because Gurner, part of the reason why Gurner was able to be in the in the group at all was because he was eager, and so it wasn't our leader capacity. I suppose we can put Drek back in. On probation. Assistant to the head of research. 
will temporarily assist research. Gurner is gone. I'm, I must have just just it, it blinked and gone away or something, but the, normally there's a little, a little notification when a leader dies. Or a battle notification, too. Anomaly found. All right, Drek. Unusual fluctuations in space-time have been detected in the vicinity of this asteroid. Further analysis is advised. Space-time, you say? Did Drek leave? He, did, he isn't even here for the moment of being reinstated. It was probably organized by Gurner to, to gain influence. <laughs> Eisen, thanks for hanging. It's been fun. Uh-oh, though it rightfully belongs to us, the Skinnerian state has audaciously laid claim to the Excavus system. Once again, we're not at war with them. But because we're their rival, they're they're starting to act as though if they were to declare war, that they would get to claim. So this game is similar to other Paradox games, Crusader Kings, that sort of thing, where war is nuanced. It's not like civilization where you take out their city and it's now your city. Or, you know, whatever other games, you know, all, pretty much all 4Xs where you just, you take something else that's yours. In this, our, our friends over here, they've invaded... Right? They've invaded the system. But if they have not provided a casus belli, a reason for the war that includes a claim on this system being rightfully theirs, which costs a whole lot of influence, if they have not done it, when the war is over, they will return everything that isn't rightfully claimed. So maybe this whole war is actually over like this one star that's between them. Like that might be the only... Thing that changes hands at the end of the war because that might be the only thing they have claimed now we don't know what they've claimed so they might have claimed the whole empire they might not be claiming anything they might just be saying hey you need to be changing your government type they might be conquering the whole thing they might be turning them into a vassal i don't actually know the terms of that war but wars are nuanced in this and so that's very interesting that wars are not just paint the map your color and so they're claiming one of these so if we were to fight our neighbors they already have a claim on this one because we it was originally theirs. Now they're claiming the next one up. And so if we went to war, the immediate war would be over these two stars, not over the whole empire. As time goes on, they can spend more and more influence and continue to claim. They could claim our whole empire, and then the war's over the whole empire. It just isn't yet. How's our necromancers doing with their defense? The devastation's up to 6%. The first Dread Army is about to be eliminated. They've just been bombarding it from orbit. Looks like more... Oh, here comes the troops. These are... Uh, these are transport ships. So they're, they're getting... They're gearing up to actually invade the planet. Meanwhile, our analysis... Let's go check this out. The Vermilion system... Our analysis of the temporal fluctuations in the Vermilion system have revealed something remarkable. A massive prism floating in space. Rather than light, the prism reflects time, refracts time depending on the angle of incidence. The crew of the Isis von Braun report experiencing time at different rates. Biometric scans indicate that some have aged rapidly, while others are days or even years younger than they should be. While our study of the prism has certainly deepened our understanding of the nature of the properties of time, its origin and purpose remain a mystery. That's going to make that asteroid get some extra physics data for the rest of the game. So we'll be able to scan that thing. Now we can't see the prism. Oh. Fossilized room. This is this is elsewhere. This is actually... This is one of our other planets. You recall how there was a subterranean civilization on one of our previous colonies. Well, now that we've landed on this colony, a separate colony, we found fossilized remains from several different species that do not appear to have been indigenous to Hokaja Prime. They've been found in large and secluded in a large secluded valley on the moon. This is the moon. Uh, they all date from roughly the same time period within the span of a few centuries, some 3.6 million years ago. 
Each of these species seems to have been evolved in its own unique biosphere, and all appear to have been sapient. Strangely, every fossilized individual found so far shows signs of having met a violent end. Curious, this is going to create a new archaeological site for us to explore. Which is another mini storyline that uh, one of our scientists can check out. Okay, this is our scanning of the giant squid thing in that system. Long range scanners have picked up readings in the Tistra system that could be best described as giant heat blobs. It's worth investigating. So, it, it, this. If we hadn't just walked in, instead if we had scanned it from before, from farther away, uh, we'd, we'd be wondering what's in there, and we'd be learning this is not some empire with ships communicating it, their heat blobs. So it's it's fauna, it's, it's space animals out there. Make it so. They're going to continue scanning that. Oh. All right. All right, Elias, you have been investigating the mysterious missing planet in the Hilito system. And you have learned the planets were moved. The abnormal hyperlanes we detected in the Hilito system. We detected this yesterday. So in, in part 1 of our of our series here, we detected the system where they had all these strange miniature hyperlanes wormholes leaving the leaving the system the abnormal hyperlanes we detected there were each tethered to where we previously had expected to discover worlds after studying these strange lanes we realized they all lead to the same place a star system called dacha which was thought unreachable yet if we were to combine all these slender hyperlanes we could pass a science ship through there's something out there a planet has disappeared and it's connected somehow. We could say we must find out where the hyperlanes lead, or do we even really want to know? Now, I kind of think that there might be friends on the other side. All right. Um... We'll wait on the decision. And and Cardell, I, I absolutely agree. These events are amazing. Each one is enthralling. Like, what's going to happen? And it's like the best of science fiction all thrown together in one melting pot and see what happens. I need to be right back. Uh, Mrs. Drewski has stepped away um, to go pick up some things. And Baby Drewski, has, who has been sick the last two days, evidently is in dire need of a diaper change. And so I will go and work on that. I'll be right back. We'll turn on our fancy AFK text.
Mr. Scribbler, thank you for the follow. I apologize, everyone. That was an emergency. That was definitely an emergency. We had to take care of that. Um, poor kiddo. He's been sick for two days. Hasn't been able to keep anything down or in. And so, uh, dad duties. Uh-oh. The stream is lagging. Unknown as to why. I'm waiting for it to catch up before we start resuming here. Okay, it's looking better. All right, so we're back. We're back, and and we are enjoying the the events here. So the Hilito system has a mysterious set of hyperlanes going to the Dacha system, and we don't know where that's going to lead us, but we're going to find out. Cardella, did, did it not? So on my screen, as well as Mrs. Drewski's computer, uh, the the game. Like, the, the stream just completely lagged out. So that's what I was waiting for. That's that's what I was talking about. But we're going to check this thing out. We need to know where those hyperlanes lead. Aha! Aha! A whole new, previously unknown star system. A, a tri... What do you call it? A triple... A trinity... Trinary star system. Alright, Elias. You are on the case. Go check that out. We're gonna find out. We don't know what's over there. It could be dangerous. But Elias, you're a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Here we go! Construction complete. That's our star base with, with its defenses. Special project complete. Oh! That's Automod then, Cardell. I again I apologize. I do not know what Automod is doing, because under normal circumstances, if somebody actually is typing something that actually should be moderated, it asks me. It asks me, should this can be blocked or not? And uh, and there's been a number of people that it's saying uh, it's just blocking you randomly, and, and I do not know why. I don't think you have either. I, I genuinely do not think that you have said anything against any rules. I think it's just the Automod bugging out. So, don't take offense to it. I, you haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> it's just, you're not the only one that's doing that to. Okay, we've completed the special project. One of our probes burrowed through the ground and intercepted the tunneling aliens uh, on Cider Prime. This is our colony. This is our colony here that has some sort of subterranean civilization. We have made contact. After the startled alien workers calmed down, the probe was successful in establishing communications with their leaders. <laughs> Open a channel! Here we go. No video feed, but they're asking, is this thing on? Can you see us, surfacers? We understand you hail from the great nothing that lies upwards, beyond the stone. Oh, the game was still going. Beyond the stone, it was assumed nothing living could exist there. But evidently, this is not so. What are your intentions? Well, first we can ask them to tell us about themselves before we make any sort of decision. And I think we should. They say, our empire stretches across every pocket of the known world. Only the great nothing lies beyond our reach. We have many fine cities supported by the lichen farms and fish we catch in large rivers flowing through our tunnels. This has been our way for thousands of years. Our diggers heard the faint echoes of your cities through the stone, and we decided to investigate. It sounds er, Elias that says that sounds like earthworms. Can we use them as fishing bait? No, they are our friends. We're friends with ticks. We can be friends with worth with worms. <laughs> you guys are so aggressive. Um, so we're 
we must be Xenophile. We're, we must play the race we picked. Uh, we're friendly sloths. So we can tell them that we would like to coexist in peace or submit or be destroyed. Yeah, yeah, of course we're going to ask for peace. So, so this is what's going to be the outcome. There's going to be a new effect on our planet, a subterranean civilization modifier. So first of all, 10% bonus society research on that planet for the rest of the game. It adds a couple of new modifiers as well. These uh, subterranean contact zones, which gives extra generator districts and, and total max districts. The idea is like we have underground terrain that we can work in, as well as a new job for our population to be liaison officers. And so we're going to we're going to do that. Then so we shall, surfacer. Let us share this world together in the spirit of peace. We'd be most interested in trading with your people. I believe we have much to offer one another. We shall return to our cities and make the arrangements. Wonderful. New friends. So that's here. And there's our subterranean civilization modifier. I don't know why the game keeps going while I thought I left it paused. So we have multiple things. Uh, spoilers, don't read that yet. So there is a new job, the subterranean liaison officer. They're going to work with the, the planet there. The features on the planet has a uh, teeming caverns, farming caverns, mining sites. So these are, these are play, taking up spots on the planet. But uh, we don't mind, they're our friends. All right. There was an event here before we find out the worlds. This planet, Vermilion 2, this planet emits strange magnetic waves, quite unlike anything we have seen so far, almost as if trying to communicate with us. It is only logical to investigate this unusual phenomenon. We may have just encountered an extraordinary example of life on a planetary scale. So, normally, with it being a 450 number of days to, to research, normally I would say this takes too long. We still need to get out there and, and find things. But, we're kind of getting, we're running out of things in the backyard to fill up to, to research, so I think I'm willing to check this thing out because we can't quite claim all this anyway. We gotta catch up. So let's find out. A planet-wide intelligence, perhaps? Alright, what the this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We've arrived at Dacha. Orbiting each of the three stars in the Dacha system, that's this one here. We'll check it out once I unpause are ecological paradises, Gaia worlds, each capable of sustaining organic life. Initially, we thought these might be uninhabited, given the lack of pollution. Yet, after performing deeper scans, we discovered large, sprawling cities spanning each planet from end to end. Stranger still, it seems like the only central star, only the central star has planets originally from the system. The others are orbited by planets from Hileto and other more remote systems. But how? We're role-playing a dog. Friends? Friends? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we get some, some physics research. I'm going to hit this and should unpause. Yep. And now we can have a look. Look at this. Every one of these orange icons is an unexplored Gaia world. And what's interesting is... Here's the worlds from our Hilito system. We're in the Dacha star system, but these are named after the Hilito star because they came from our system. They moved them over here. And then there's more. Here's the Dacha worlds. And then, most excitingly of all, there's another world. Soul 10. Now, if you know much at all about... You know, it's fairly common accepted science fiction i don't know if it's an official thing if because nobody really agrees on these sorts of things but generally accepted at least in sci science fiction is our own star the star of earth is named soul and depending on your position on pluto there's there's up to 10 or nine planets <laughs> and there's always been this uh this this theory that there's a missing 10th planet or 9th planet, depending on Pluto. Maybe, maybe somebody stole it and brought it here. Soul 10. I love it. 
I love it. There it is in the Dacha system all along. So Elias is going to check that out. Colony established. Oh, good. That is a good farming colony. Aggressive wildlife and flora. Actually gives uh, soldier jobs, too. Interesting. But it also gives a science a science uh, community as well with these wild storms. This is a crazy planet. We had this from, from the first session. But we just now claimed it. That's over here. Still have not solved a consumer good problem. But the rest of the resources are starting to catch back up. We've been we've still been spending immense resources on this uh, plague here. It's not ending anytime soon, it seems. Okay, one of the Federation has now made these guys their rival. Construction complete. All right, our fun-filled star system here with lots of minerals is just waiting for the taken. We'll start off with this 8. 34 minerals in a system that reminded us that there were an unusually high concentration of crystals and minerals in that asteroid belt and perhaps some movement. Perhaps there was some movement in there. But that's fine. We're going to go check it out. We're going to go start getting those minerals. We need them. industry too. Oh my. Oh my, we're surveying those Gaia worlds. In the Dacha system, surveying a new Gaia world is, un is usually a momentous event, but for the crew of the Isis Sojourner, this is Elias here, it is going to become routine for the next few months. The multiple worlds house, worlds house some very strange pre-FTLs. They obviously have not achieved spaceflight, yet the renewable energy production rivals our most efficient reactors. A further oddity is the equal spread of resources. Every world has everything they need to survive, which should be impossible. We are seeing goods only produced on one planet arrive on another without a single transport ship taking flight. We need an observation post right now. Incoming transmission. So there is some sort of species down here. Gaia cedars, grand tree saplings. What do these people look like? Jellyfish! The Habanete jellyfish people. Another commercial pact. Opportunity. Are they beaming it? We'll have to find out. First contact event. Aha! The Tayanki. The diviners name the beings floating through the dark. Tayanki. This is the species of the matriarch up here. The giant one that, that killed off uh, Gurner. May he rest in peace. They are sacred and peaceful space-born life form that roams from system to system, feeding on gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants, rarely showing any signs of hostility. We are to keep a respectful distance. Venerable. So, we have a new, re a new research option. Frequency tuning. It's actually a, a type of a beam weapon, if need be. But we gain some influence, and the Placid Leviathans are, are now understood. An alien empire. Has established communications. It's not really an empire, but it is. We know what they are now. So, so this is a, a matriarch. This is the the mother of all the Tainki. Really, what they are, space whales. And that one is Moby Dick. So, we want to leave that one alone. But the rest are friendly. <laughs> Bronze, mid laner. Welcome to the channel. Welcome for the follow. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Let's 
So we're continuing the scan. Incoming transmission. Any fun builds? Oh yeah. We're actually doing something I think is quite fun right now. Um, if you haven't played in a while, the game is certainly going to be different. Let me pause. There's the transmissions. The, the game is going to be different from what you remember. Every few months, the, the entire game changes with, with patches. So, um, very different now. There's, there's more events and things. Uh, whether you bought the DLC or not, the game has changed. Perhaps the most noticeable thing is going to be the leaders. I love it. Not everyone does. It's highly uh, argued over in the forums. But uh, leaders matter now, and they actually, you have a council of leaders. Uh, they, they level up and get different skills, a whole bunch more skills. They have way more um, events and choices and things like that, too. Have we ever... Mm. Um, and so, one of the things, let me show you. This is our high council. So we've, we're doing a build that is focused on leaders to, to emphasize that aspect. So we are getting extra experience for our leaders, lifespan for our leaders, a minus maximum number of negative traits for our leaders with the goal that they just don't get negative traits. And so right now we have three positions. Our, our king or leader is really a pastor. I'm Pastor Drewski on stream. So uh, pastor is our, is our leader. And then we have a minister of defense, uh, head of research, we are currently working to expand the council to make a new spot here. So more leaders, this is our list of leaders, can be on the council. They have There are some that affect the whole empire with different buffs now. So for example, uh, our, our emperor has, you know, he's a champion of the people, of course he is. Uh, giving happiness, research speed, all sorts of things to the whole empire. Whereas other scientists that don't have those sorts of things, they, they instead have the more... Uh, normal, you know, extra survey speed, archaeology, things like that. Uh, there's just so much more in the game to discover and explore. I thoroughly enjoy it. We have finished our research. We noted earlier that we needed power on our ships to put the cloaking device on. And yes, there is cloaking now. It's kind of a gimmick. It's not that useful. But it's a thing. And then, oh, oh, now we are playing as a xenophile race. We like aliens. And two of these th three members of this federation are offering a migration treaty. They're wanting to, to know if we want to have aliens uh, live amongst us, be adopted into our people. Now, these guys happen to like cold worlds. Yeah, the leaders are, are really fun. I love it. There's, there's a whole new origin. I don't even know how long ago you were playing because origins are now a thing. And there's a, there's a whole lot of them. And they totally change the way you play too. And we have a specific one as well, but we'll get to that later. Um, these people like Arctic worlds. So what we're going to do is we will actually... You, you, if you guys have been watching any amount of time, I've been turning down every deal because they're caught they would cost influence every time you make a deal it costs influence i've been turning them down left and right i'm gonna accept a migration treaty with the holy lagan choose empire because that species enjoys cold worlds and we actually have a world right there that we can now colonize with their species as our citizens so we're going to do that. And we like aliens anyway. I think we even have a faction that... Uh, different factions have different wants. So so this one, they, they like aliens, but I don't think one of their demands... Sometimes there's factions that, like, if we don't have multiple aliens in our empire, so we're doing something wrong, so they're, they're mad. But it looks like this faction is not that one. So they're fine with... Uh, you know, with, with where we're at. But at the same time, you know, we, as a species, we don't mind aliens. So let's agree. But there's the other one. This other species, they too like Arctic worlds. And so, why not? I, I guess what we could have done is we could have looked at the actual species and see who's more beneficial. But let's go ahead. So that should mean 
that we can now colonize this world using something other than our home species. If you see this 20% uh, in red, here's our, our sloth home species. Um, they don't like this, this planet. One of the other guys, I don't know why I have the option for the, the third guy, but we do. He's an ocean world. He doesn't like the, the cold world either. But both of the other ones, they love Arctic worlds. They're at 80, 90% habitability. And so I can outright colonize this planet using migrants from the other empire on a planet they like. And so who do we want to colonize it with? This species gets bonus food, bonus trade value, and any leaders they bring have extra uh, benefit. They don't have upkeep as much. But lower experience gain and empire size from pops is, is uh, reduced. The other one has bonus habitability, research, a, a general worker pop resource bonus benefit, as well as army. We don't care about the army so much. But the pop growth speed is reduced. That is probably the, the game, the, the, the deal breaker right there. We don't want growth speed reduction. So let's colonize with the Cardu species and get the bonus food and trade, and maybe even a leader. But that's a whole nother planet that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Whoa. Whoa, double things. That's a bug. Okay. Our home world of Twitch has an issue. Now, let me let me just explain real quick. We had a origin. Yes, CGF. The Empire has been expanding. Uh, we have an origin uh, where our, we, our people migrated to another planet because they felt like we were going to be attacked by the, the great unknown, the aliens out there. Most of us love aliens. Those who don't fled to this other planet, and they're, they're a subgroup of our species. And we're kind of polar opposite in, uh, in temperament here. They don't like aliens. And so we've had problems left and right, but something just popped up. What should have been a celebration of diversity and friendship ended on a sour note as a protest organized by Den, those troublemakers, broke out in front of the Laganchu's embassy. Oh, in fact, this is not a bug. It's just happened twice. The Laganchu's and the Vestilian, both of those embassies at the same time. The protesters were not shy about their views, shouting that such colorful slogans as Parasites belong in the recycling plant! <laughs> or shrooms for the other one, because they're fungoids and these ones are, are anthropods. So, <laughs> they're insulting them. Shrooms belong in the recycling plant. Unsurprisingly, this has increased diplomatic tensions between our empires. So we can immediately reprimand Den twice here. Resulting in them, the people refusing to work, that gets us less research speed and lowered uh, opinion. Lowered opinion, or I can let them chant, which is really lowered opinion, and we're trying to make friends. So we're actually going to reprimand and apologize, take the lesser of the two evils. We're actually not gonna invade. This is our origin, these are our brethren. Um, and our people were role-playing as a xenophile, pacifist, spiritualist empire. And so it's not our way to go and uh, invade. But these guys are causing all sorts of trouble because they think that we're making a grave mistake. The story goes that a hundred years ago, this planet, the Divider, was mysteriously blown up. Here it comes with the, uh, the damage was blown up by some outside force and so a third of our people basically said we don't want to we don't want, want to know what's out there uh maybe they missed us and they think we're gone but somebody out there wants us dead and so they fled to the planet we now call den and uh meanwhile we we insisted that they, everyone out there must be friends yeah it's space trauma and so we're gonna try to reform them someday but for now they've been causing trouble and yes, CGF, the Empire has expanded. I don't know if you were here for it, but we got the system with the megastructure. That was yesterday. So through some shenanigans, we actually were able to peacefully claim this system from our neighbor. Unfortunately, our neighbor doesn't like us much, so they are... Um, 
rivaling, you know, making us their enemy. But their neighbor on the other side is now our new friend, and they are actually at war, and our new friend is winning. They're actually bombarding their homeworld as we speak. Yes, it was an unfortunate uh, turn of events that, you know, we had to to take that, that system. Construction complete. All right, so we claimed that eight. There's another eight. Let's go get that. These are wonderful systems here. Surely nothing will go wrong by claiming all of those. Uh, no connection, but let's build up our fleet. <laughs> Construction complete. Trying to get, get some of the better systems here. We're also trying to get over here to this relic world. Need to save up a little bit more influence. And then obviously we want to get all the way over here. Get all this stuff. Yes, we will show our peaceful intents by force. <laughs> Absolutely. <Construction. laughs> oh, this is news. Our neighbors are at peace. The Sakarian state made peace with the Holy Laganchu's empire. Okay, the effects were... The Skankarian state is forced to adopt the ethics and government form of the Holy Laganchu's empire. And so their previous patriarch has been forced to abdicate. This is amazing for us. These guys, who formerly were militarists, remember we, they were, we were neighboring them and they were militarists and that was a problem. That was why they were so scary. Now... They have been forced to change, to be reformed. That was a, a, a non-conquest war of liberating the people to the, the better way of life. And so now they are instead xenophile and fanatic spiritualists, which matches the other guys over there. Making them more compatible, perhaps joining their, their federation someday. And that might even mean we might join their federation someday. That's incredible. But relations are still hostile. So they are still harming our relations. Uh, they are still rivaling us. But perhaps we can be on the upswing. Perhaps it's it's manageable now because we don't have them being a militarist with us being peaceful as a, a opposite opposition. So we are still rivals, but I think it might be something we can fix. But before we do... Out of curiosity, since they've lost all of their military and lost the war, they have no fleet, per se. What if we just see what their feelings are about being our subjects? I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's, there's not really... We're not really, you know, forcing it. We're just for their own good, their own protection. Okay. All right. We can, we can propose all we want, but they have a modifier called recently liberated meaning that no matter what we propose they have a minus 1000 acceptance stat to this there is no way that they would accept being liberated when that wears off we'll check again but they'll have built rebuilt their fleet by then but what you can potentially do is when the, somebody's weakened you can you can bring them under your wing for safekeeping sometimes they need some guidance exactly and so what this allows, just because this is our first time looking at this screen, this is the basic vassal. There's other types. If you have the Overlord DLC, there's more types. Um, but the basic vassal here, we have terms of the, of the vassalization. So we can allow this integration. They prefer, their loyalty goes up when we are prohibited from integrating them. Integrating them being, means peacefully conquering them. Like basically we would absorb them. So right now that's not allowed. They like that. We'd have to officially change that policy if we if and they wouldn't like it then. This is not happening because of the the recently liberated stat. Uh 
in this current default setting, they ha they would have restricted voting in any sort of uh, space UN deal. They'd have to vote with us. They would vote, but it'd be with us. They're kind of a satellite state. They'd also have regulated expansion. They'd actually, they're allowed to expand, but they'd have to pay us influence to do so. And then you get to some really inter interesting things where we could make it where they'd have to pay us a tribute of either resources, research, alloys, str strategic resources, or we might augment them. We might actually give them resources to get them on their feet because we, we like aliens so much. And we're not doing any of this. We can also talk about who gets into whose wars. We can build buildings on their planets, holdings. It's a whole nother thing. And then about sensors. But we can't do any of this at the moment. So we're just going to close the screen. Just a taste. In addition to that, there are other types of ways to vassal somebody. Other categories. Uh, specializations that they can be. And that's really interesting. But it'll be some other time we look at all that. Okay, the governing ethics shift. So it is now telling us... Oh! <laughs> the very next day... Following a long period of growing support of strength through Conquest Coalition, the Skykarian Holy Principality has finally embraced the faction, adopting their core values and policies. As a result of bringing this faction into their government, they have become more outwardly militaristic. The day after the peace has been signed, they went back on their word. They are now no longer fanatic spiritualists. They added militaries back in. <laughs> and this is this is because the people are militarist, and there was a faction that was militarist, and the and they were so strong, they were so unhappy if there's not represented in the government that they really had no choice but to switch back. Um, so sadly, that means they're going to be that much harder for us to get along again. Now, it is saying that, that our relations have improved. Last month, it went up by quite a bit. So maybe they'll end the rivalry on their own. We'll see. But I had big hopes for them to stay spiritualist and not military. And they're, they're becoming friends. There's a commercial pack there. Ah, yes. Drek was investigating that planet-wide life form. What we first assumed to be a deliberate attempt of communication has turned out to be an unusual but naturally occurring phenomenon. The magnetic waves produced by the planet, given proper handling and editing, may sound a bit like talking or even singing, but they are no way created by a thinking being. Some of our scientists, however, find it quite catchy. It might be, the might be possible to make use of this phenomenon, possibly by ho hosting artists or VIPs at a station created solely to catch these signals and play them as relaxing music. Fascinating. So the system now has bonus unity as a resource to be gained. Okay, they're making more research agreements. So once again, we want to get out here and claim all this. Ooh, odd readings. While scanning an asteroid belt, our science team found some sort of irregularity. Well, yeah, check it out, Drek. Lots of agreements are happening because you got four different people all making agreements with each other now. So they're doing migration, they're doing uh, commercial research, all these packs are all between each other there. So even though they just lost a war, the new government is favorable towards the old, towards the, the conquerors. They, they, they're basically like a puppet government. Research complete. Oh, good. We finished our growth speed tech. But now we should have access to that insight tech that we got by watching our pre-FTLs. Okay, so the basic tech's available. We can build hydroponic farms, that's extra food source. We can learn how to clear out big sinkholes, but we only have one in our empire. Previously, in our various archaeological digs, we found out the ability to make ancient saturator artillery. No, granted, the... the, the it's not up and running, and I have bad news. You died. <laughs> we lost Gurner. Yes, I'm sorry. You're late to your own funeral. In your defense, it was a giant space whale. <laughs> um... <laughs> 
Yeah, it was pretty epic. It was pretty epic. It's still there. It's actually a Leviathan. We don't even know the strength of it, but the game puts it, instead of a number, it puts a, a skull. The Tyanke Matriarch. It's basically Moby Dick. Um... It's a, it's, a, it's a space whale that, that is angry and bigger than all the rest. So, if your cannon was a heart, you would have shot your... your cannon, if, if your chest was a cannon, you would have shot your heart upon it. <laughs> you did have an office job, but you were also out exploring and then you died. Sorry. So, we have the ability to research the saturator artillery. This is a extra large spinal mount battleship cannon and we don't even have the technology to build battleships so this is not going to be that useful plus we're pacifists so we're not going to worry about that just yet we also can research xenolinguistics this we need to do really badly uh, very important but this is not what the pre-ftl thing was that's going to be this compact living we learned this technology can exist because of our study of the pre-ftls this is something you would not have had otherwise and so what it does, it's going to give us half of a value of a new envoy. Now, we'd have to get another one like that to get actually get a new envoy. But it's halfway there. And our empire size effect is reduced by 5%. I've never mentioned what empire size is just because it's one extra complication thing. But what it means is the more districts, systems, colonies, population that you have, the larger your empire size goes up. The larger it goes up beyond the number 100, we're right at that, we're at 97. Once it passes 100, we start taking a percentage reduction in our research speed and unity because our empire is large and unwieldy, inefficient. And so if we were to get that, we'd actually reduce our empire size, it's more efficient. Therefore, we'd not have that, that problem. Now, since we haven't actually gotten to that problem yet, and this costs 1500 I'm less interested. I'm, I'm wanting to have this Lino Linguistics. It gives us a lump sum of influence, so we can claim the planet, and it allows renowned leaders to appear, as well as some other fun things. So we'll, we'll work on that one. Yeah, the Savage is actually, that's something that we otherwise would never have gotten. So that was the, the pre-FTL benefit. Yeah, the little friendos we're studying, we're guiding. We are guiding them. We're, I don't know if you knew this as well, but we actually have an, an espionage mission to indoctrinate their society. And it's actually coming along quite well. So it doesn't necessarily give us updates along the, every step of the way. But we're on like stage four um, of four. Yeah, three of four stages have been completed. Uh, and we're working on the, the next stage. Once, we, once the stage completes, we should convert their society to something closer to ours. And so they'll be more likely to be friends. Incoming transmission. Migration treaty. No, these guys are so so our migration packs are actually costing us influence. I might even cancel the one out of the two that we have. It's it's costing us influence and these guys land they prefer ocean worlds we prefer tropical worlds both are within the the group of wet worlds therefore if we find an ocean world our people can live on it we don't need their people and i our people might like them we might like having them but we can't afford the influence without like some other benefit the benefit we're getting right now from the other guys is that we can colonize this arctic world that we otherwise couldn't but i do think these guys that we're not colonizing with, I'm going to break this migration treaty. Now, I hope this doesn't ruin our, our friendship. It, it did drop it some. Yeah, we broke the migration treaty. It went down 15, but it'll go back up. Uh, and the reason why is now, instead of costing us 0.5 of our influence turn, it should only cost us 0.25 for the other one. Oh no, we've met several. So, we met the neighbor. He traded our our communication information to these this trio. This is a a a, a federation of three empires. You can see they all match the same color. And uh the, because of their starting origin, their one of their origins was actually to have a federation at the beginning. So they they actually have 
Each one might be small, but together they're strong, that sort of thing. And so this trio actually declared war on our neighbor, forced them to convert to their ways, which is closer to us, so that's hopefully good. And, uh, and you know, now they've made peace. So we're hoping to make better friendship with them, that they'll forgive us for taking their land, because we took that system earlier. And then we met a hive mind in the south. They're, they're not much to look at. Not much to look at. But uh, these guys are quite... It's a quite friendly hive mind. So, you know, it's the overmind from StarCraft, but nice. There you go. So, close. These guys were fanatic militarist. Now they're only partially militarist, and they've adopted xenophile and spiritual. I don't remember all that they were. Our pre-FTL buddies... Those are the fanatic... Uh, materialist and that's what our science our, our espionage indoctrinate people are working on so they're they're close to converting them hopefully away from the mil uh, materialist yeah Incoming transmission. okay they want the migration treaty back I'm actually gonna turn it down uh, I I don't want to pay the price so so now we're only paying 0.25 influence not 0.5 and so uh we get a little bit more power of faith. Oh no, they're they're dealing. Our, our little buddies are dealing with the plague. I don't know if I mentioned this. That would be good. I don't know how to do that, but that would be great to have a, a Twitch command to review the current status. So I could just have it give updates. I potentially could have the a brief summary of like the story so far up to this playthrough, and you could just get caught up on yesterday. You know, that sort of thing. But I, I only can have, like, one one command at a time, so it'd be complicated. Uh, so our, our little buddies, they've actually been having a, a plague sweeping across their planet. It's It's been progressing. It's almost done. Word continues to spread of the demons at work. They're calling us demons for trying to help them. We've been trying to combat the plague. Word continues to spread of the demons at work on, on Excavus 4. Fanatics have descended upon our healthcare providers, clamoring for blood. Continuing to help while concealing our true nature will require a significant investment of resources. Hmm. Well. Here's our problem. We have not yet converted them. Time to call the, the Doom guy down. <laughs> We've not yet converted them to our ways. If we tell them now, we won't be able to have the same opportunity to manipulate their society. For the better. For the better. I think secrecy is still paramount. And we're going to have to spend 500 energy to, uh, to stay secret and keep it safe. Keep it secret. Yeah, what's all that energy for if not for spreading the faith? Exactly. Exactly. Incoming transmission. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Our new friends have decided that the Druskish Enlightened Kingdom is too weak to survive on its own in this hostile galaxy. Submit and become our subject or prepare for war. Reaper, maybe they didn't notice the plague until after you showed up. Yeah, they're, they're certainly blaming us. Um, This is a problem. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's a problem. So, we know if they declare war, it's all three of them. I kind of think we could take one of them, but not three of them. That's this guy. He has two total planets. Right? Like, that's just this guy. But his fleet power is overwhelming to ours. I mean, we haven't built our fleet power. We have similar tech, similar economy. Our economy will out outpace them eventually because we've got more planets. They're just not full. They're growing. Um, here's their terms they're proposing. They they are they are doing a proposal that we're, we're, they're not allowed to integrate us, so they won't kill us. Our voting would be restricted. Our expansion would be regulated. They would come to 
Actually, no, this is Overlord. So we would have to fight in a defensive war for them. If they went on offense, we wouldn't be obligated. But they would defend us if we're attacked. And they'd be able to build a holding in our, in our land. I think it would mean... So here's what would probably happen. Federations are a little bit weird. So depending on the Federation's laws, if you're in a Federation, you actually have laws that you can pass for the Federation that everyone in the Federation either agrees on, or if it's like a one-sided, like, hegemony, uh, then you're the only, you know, and you're the leader of it, everyone else is like a satellite state. There's different rules, different terms going on. Basically, though, if it's the, if it's the standard Federation, all three empires would have to agree to declare war. They'd vote. So these guys might want to declare war, but they might be outvoted by the other two who happen to like us. And Cardella, yeah, I think the breaking the migration treaty lowered their opinion just past a certain threshold to where now they're thinking of, even though they're still considered friendly, but now they're looking at us as like, for our own good, we need protection. That might have a part in it. Um, but it also could just be they're they're they just beat the one the one guys now they want to have the next they're looking for fresh blood to to, to get right so because our fleet is nothing we're, here's what we're going to do because we think the federation likes us we're in, we have an association status which it which doubles as a non-aggression pact right a non-aggression pact he actually can't declare war without first causing the whole federation to renounce the association status and then we'd have a 10 year gap before anyone's allowed to declare war yeah from ai decision making standpoint they didn't take it personally per se when we broke it it wasn't like oh man they, they hurt our feelings but it does affect the the spectrum of of relation and so potentially they might have been looking at if we goes lower past a certain threshold, they might consider us for vacillation, and then that might have dropped us past that threshold. But I think because of the association status and the federation, I think we're safe. I'm going to decline. I'm going to decline. I don't know that for certain. But there's a lot of things like moving parts when it comes to a federation. They haven't declared war yet, but they still might have to... Yeah, laugh out loud, no. Uh, they still have to make that work. Now, part of our problem is if we wanted to gear up for war, we actually don't... We haven't been focusing on alloys, which is the resource to make ships, to make star bases, defense platforms. We haven't focused on that at all. We, we have very little in the way of resources in general. We're, we're in an expansion mode, not in conquest mode. Just sending a TikTok, nah, bro. <laughs> hey, a small celestial object was pronounced gaseous and particulate with... with Pronounced gaseous and particulate traits, trails, tails, was recently observed in the Prime system. Its passing was uneventful, but we think of it as a good omen. We got a little bit of unity. Thank you. The uh, the universe sent sent us some some bits to Twitch here. Some some bits. System survey complete. Aha! Metallic puddles. What is this? Another event on another planet. This is our, our newest colony. After recent rainfall, colonists have noticed metallic puddles appearing on the surface of Tapper Prime. These puddles have a viscous consistency like a liquid metal. We could say leave them alone. They might be toxic. Get some unity out of that. Or investigate further. We are very short society research because we, for the last 10 years, we've been trying to fight this plague, costing half of our society research. I feel like 900 when we're only gaining 25 or 27 is a huge deal. Yes, yeah, a good omen <laughs> because we made good decisions, right? All right, we're going we're gonna to investigate. More things are happening. The Isis Von Braum. Who is this? Drek. Back at it. Actually managed to pinpoint... It's, the game is surprised that Drek was productive. But actually managed to pinpoint the source of the odd signals as it soared past through the asteroid belt. A tiny alien construct. 
A simple scan reveals that it is some sort of ritualistic container holding the remains of an alien spacefarer. It's a coffin! So we can say to let the coffin continue its voyage, get more science, or open the coffin and study the corpse with even more science. Now what would we do? Are, are, we are not a science over morality species. We, we are xenophile, we like aliens. We're peaceful, we're spiritual. I think if we see a coffin floating by, we would we would pay it respects. Sacrilegious to what? To open the thing? I think it'd be sacrilegious to open it. Yeah, let's let it continue its voyage. Besides, you never know what you happen when you open it. Meanwhile, most exciting, a new tradition. I could pay it respect after dissecting it. Good point. <laughs> a hidden unity hit there. Something might go wrong if you open it. Maybe. Maybe. This is an important moment. If you're new to the game, this is a big moment. Uh, I've mentioned before, our, our society, our research, our unity... Uh, is is progressing and we're going through these different cultural trees we're focused on leaders so we're, we're on the aptitude tree this is the emphasis on making the best sloths among us even better um, we're about to finish the tree there's only one attribute left in the tree after that we'll start a new tree we could have started a new tree along, all along but we wanted to finish it this is a healthcare program through continuous health parameter monitoring, we tailor everything from exercise and diet to invasive sur surgical procedures to get the most from our leaders. Yes, Gurner, invasive surgical procedures so you can live, well, we, you would have lived 20 years longer. You're, you're not here anymore. We should have done this for you. Everyone else, though, gets to live a little longer. It's the 20 extra years, but there's something more. Because this is the finishing... Uh, choice on this tree we get an added bonus if you look at the, the the aptitude tree itself this is the finisher effect adopting all aptitude traditions will grant the following additional effects we get plus one leader capacity plus one additional leader trait options so when we level up we actually get a bonus trait to pick from and an ascension perk what is an ascension perk you ask well, i'm glad you asked it's over here. So we just gained those stats. We now can have seven leaders, but most importantly, we have one perk of our total eight unlocked. Ascension perks are special bonuses that our empire can unlock by completing a tradition tree. Let's find out. These are powerful bonuses that affect us the rest of the game. There's a lot of them. There's a lot that are grayed out because there are certain conditions for them to be met. We're not going to worry about those just yet. Some of them uh, are here. If you were worried about DLC, some of them, like the Utopia DLC, which is generally considered the best DLC if you don't have any, uh, this is where that one comes into play. Some of these perks are so important to the game, and Utopia is the way that you get them. So some of these perks are, are, are limited by that. But... Uh, there are some. Lord of War, that's not going to be us, but this is actually mercenaries. We're not going to worry about that. Interstellar Dominion, probably not us as well, but what is interesting is it does make it so that new star bases cost less influence. That has been our, our holding, like our bottleneck is, is the influence cost. But we're just not the type to, to, to be making claims on other empires and such. We're going to skip that. However, there is a technological ascendancy giving an empire-wide 10% bonus to research speed and a 50% increase in our rare technology chance to appear. Now, it's not actually 50% of the time getting it. It's, as it explains, if you had a 1% chance, it's now a 1.5% chance. But this is, without a doubt, the most solid choice that any game that you play through, if you play the game, that you could pick. Research is always good. Rare technologies are good. This is always good. But we're role-playing. 
we're not focused on science as much as we are on other things, like spiritualism, which gives us unity. That's this next one. One vision. True unity is achieved only when the ultimate goals of a nation and the people are one and the same. After all, a house divided against, against itself cannot stand. 10% bonus to monthly unity. Minus 10% amenity usage. That means the people are easier to keep happy. You use an amenity to make them happy. Have we pacified the universe yet? We're working on it. Working on it. Uh, we're getting our first ascension perk. We're kind of walking through it. Most likely we're looking at this one vision. We like the unity. Uh, so we're, we're, we're looking at that. Additionally, there's other things we could do. As a spiritualist, this is unique to spiritualists, we could have a, a consecrated world, basically naming certain worlds as holy worlds. We cannot colonize those worlds, and our empire would get bonus to amenities and, and unity uh, because we'd have them. The downside is, is now you don't have those worlds. Instead, you could make some asteroid floating off somewhere as a, a holy rock, but it's not quite as good at being a holy rock as that you know, Gaia world that you were looking at. So this, generally speaking, is one of the weakest uh, ascensions to get out because you, you hurt yourself by losing out on planets or you have to nerf your ability to, to utilize it by picking something that is uh, not a planet. Other things, clearing blockers, we're not too worried about. Uh, this is interesting. Empire size from planet. We talked about empire size becoming a problem eventually. Uh, planets is, I believe, the colonies. So 50 of our 97 empire size is coming from planets we could reduce that and we could gain more max leaders my problem is we're running out of things for our leaders to do so we might not worry about that edict fund is something i haven't focused on too much either that tends to be useful but this one is very fun for our purposes transcendent learning we get two more capacity again i don't know where we'd put it an extra pool size so more to pick from but 33 percent experience gain Leaders would level up much faster. This would fit what we're trying to do as an empire. I just don't know how well we can utilize it yet. So what we might do is we might come back to it. Also, we could have a shared destiny. This gives us two envoys. So we can have more envoys to reach out and make friends. That's actually very useful for us. But if we happen to have subjects, so vassals, uh, we can have multiple vassals and they don't get mad that you have multiple vassals. Uh, that we might come back to. We might come back to that. We might come back to the transcendent. But I think I want to get the the one vision now because our unity has been severely lacking. So there we go. There we go. I guess I couldn't shouldn't say severely lacking. We're only 22 years into the game, but but still, I'm moving at a slower pace than I normally do. So unity is what is giving us traditions in the first place. So by gaining unity, we're gaining more traditions. So that's what allowed us to fill up this tree with all these leader bonuses. And now it allows us to fill up, up you know, six more trees. Eventually, you can use unity to, to uh, do other things like these edicts. So for example, I could add on, we're currently having peace festivals around, around the, the empire until we just decide we don't. So we're always having peace festivals. And that's giving us a 10% happiness boost all the time, as well as pacifist attraction. We could also have a veneration of saints. Our priests around the empire would be more productive, with spiritualists becoming more popular. It costs unity to do these things. So we're not quite there where we want to use all these, but um, unity would, would help that. And then there's some late game, late game things that you can use unity for as well. All right. Looks like Elias has finished exploring the system, and, and indeed, every one of those planets, the Gaia World planets, there's a half dozen of them, are all occupied by the... What were they again? The Hab Habente people, the, the space jellies. We need to get up there and, and, and research, explore this. in progress anomaly found a oh, colossal impact crater hints 
that something big collided with the surface of this moon once. All right, Drek, you can check that out. The pulsing orange signal. It's something I forgot about. Uh, so it's there to remind me, and I forgot what it was. So if I go to my situation log, it's it's literally a pulsing star. So <laughs> there's an event. Uh, we had an event where we noticed that several stars uh, have been pulsing oddly. The crew of our science ship said it's kind of it's just an, a sensor malfunction. Drek says no, he wants to investigate it. So he's actually working his way up towards it, and when he gets there, he's going to find out what it is. Have we chosen a second tradition? No, we we just uh, finished the one tradition tree, so we just chose we just finished the first tradition tree. Yeah, Drek's working on it. Meanwhile. This is the, the metallic. Remember we were studying that rain? Alright, Elias. Enjoy. Have a good night. We were studying that metallic rain uh, on top rip here. It's, it's eluding colony scientists. So far, the origin is undetermined. They have been resistant to our probing. Our, our instruments are struggling to decipher their chemical makeup. We have more tests to run if we want answers. We'll keep trying. It's just letting us know that they haven't figured out anything. Need our colonies to grow. Looks like these guys are still mad at us and dropping. FTL impact. That crater. The massive crater in Vermilion appears to be the result of a collision with the starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exiting a hyperlane at maximum velocity rammed the moon for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. I says that Von Braun has picked up a residual subspace echoes near the crash site, reminiscent of a collapsed hyperparticulate field. But as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory cannot be verified. Remarkable physics research. Okay. Is that moon? I don't think we get to see the impact crater. Oh no, back to the back to Taproot. Here we are. A new element has been discovered on Taproot Prime. After a breakthrough in the case of the viscous metallic puddles, we have discovered the puddles comprise a unique chemical element. The element, which we're calling Taproot Primordium, is present in the air of Taproot Prime, but when introduced induced to high precipitation, takes on the viscous consistency we have seen on the planet's surface. Their appearances are cyclical. Much like dihydrogen monoxide based puddles. Yes, of course, just like those. A fascinating discovery. Our understanding of the elements continues to grow. We have much to learn. A new special project. A timed special project. Okay. We need to get a science ship in orbit stat. We have a thousand days to go check this out before, before it times out. All right. Well, our closest scientist is Baby Drewski, and he's not doing much else. He's assisting research. He's going to check that out. And I'm going to hold shift and tell him to come back to assist research when he's done. Oh, good. We've, we've finished, as an update, our construction ship has finished building all of the mineral mines here on Ditrim star with the oddly productive uh asteroid ring with potential movement going along inside that's okay we're gonna benefit as much as we can how long till he gets there he's right there baby drisky you mean he's on his way estimating 160 days and counting uh-oh. Who would have known? Swarming hive craft, fast-moving attack craft, are hitting our mining stations in the Ditrim system. These unidentified aggressors swarmed out of several previously dormant asteroids in the belt that are now displaying huge power signatures. We can only surmise that these asteroids serve as some kind of hive for a previously unknown spaceform life form. Whatever they are, our expanding mining operations seem to have provoked them into action. 
They're coming in fast. Spaceborne life form encountered. No. Okay, our construction ship's trying to run away, but you need to run this way. Go to the next system. So these are swarms. But it looks like the game, perhaps as a bug, is not sending the swarms out to attack my mining platforms. Yes, I should ask the hive mind for tips. <laughs> okay, so you can understand the game absolutely wants to have the these bugs clear out your mines. Um, they're not. Construction. Complete. I'll take it. <laughs> But we are going to have to deal with them eventually. There's a lot of one and a half, 1.3 thousand strength. Now, once again, notice whatever they are, can't quite see, but whatever they are, they have hull and armor, no shields, which is our current fleet configuration. Our corvettes are all about taking out armor and hull, not shields, which is good. Finished attack, and we just got 10% more hull points. Very nice. Ooh. Now we're not warlike, but we do have a lot of things that we need to clear out of our of our land. Um, we could research afterburners for our ships. That would give them evasion and sublight speed. That's useful. We could get better armor. Level two. Normally we have like 100 hit points for an armor. This would be 130. It's a nice step up. We could get better mining. Now we're actually doing quite well on minerals at the moment. Or and this is, this is available because we, we've gotten an event that gave us Starhold research, but we could actually get level 2 star bases, and it's 99% researched already because of the event that happened. So we could pick this up right now. The problem is it would re-roll these, these other two. The top two would be re-rolled. The bottom two are, are here because we've, we've researched a portion of it already. So if we don't want these two, we could pick this one, and, and then these would be re-rolled. But we might actually want those. Yeah, we don't. You're absolutely right, Kadot. We don't have the, the resources to actually build the star holds in the first place. I'm going to get the armor. We're nowhere close to the alloys we would need for that sort of thing. Construction complete. Okay, we'll get we'll get our allies in a second, but we're gonna colonize the relic world finally. This is a big a big science planet for us. We're one alloy short. I could have bought some, but rather not. So that's on its way. System survey complete. Okay, Drek has finishes that. Shall we move him? Drek, are you still around? Let me go research that project there. I almost think this needs to make a... Hold on. Compelling the crowds. Time alone will show how lasting our effect may be on the Kareem. However, initial productions look promising. Kareemin advocates have already taken up our ideas as keenly as if they were their own. Our operatives took hol a holistic approach, encouraging curiosity and a greater appreciation for other cultures in the forms of stories, arts, and community events. With Operation Indoctrinate Society now concluded, our operatives have left it to the local xenophiles to keep their discussions alive. 
and better prepared for the Kareem civilization for life in a diverse galaxy. Good. The, we have converted them more to our ways. What are they now? It needs to update. Ah! We've gained an invaluable insight into the unique weather systems of Taprib Prime. And in addition to expanding our understanding of chemical elements, our recent research has had positive implications for food production. A positive conclusion. We just got a bunch of food and metallic puddles on the planet. Extra agriculture districts and a puddle technician job. Of course. Check that out in a moment. I want to see when the month rolls over. I want to see if this will change. There it goes. The Kareem societal shift. Our efforts to shift the societal values in the Korean civilization in a direction favored by us have produced favorable results. The Koreanian are starting to open up, becoming more and more accepting and curious about all things and their people out of their about all things their people out of ignorance once considered alien and strange to their culture. They will thank us one day. So, the end result is the fanatic materialism got downgraded because the the two points in materialism is now one point and the other point became xenophile now xenophile is good they like aliens now but they're still materialist so they're still going to be a little bit opposite from us we could meddle again but it's going to cost us again If we meddle again, we might be able to get rid of the materialism entirely. I think we're going to leave them be. We have taken the edge off. And it's kind of, it's, we, influence is just coming so hard to get more influence. I think we're just going to, um, leave it be. We have all these planets we need to claim before somebody else does. So Taprib now has a specialty huddle technician job, which looks like it produces food and an alloy. That's kind of fun. A new alien encounter in the Horsham system. We've codenamed them the Calf Aliens until we can find out more about them. Interesting, interesting. We shall. They might be friends. But Drek is currently working on the Pulsing Star. He has long been awaiting to prove his theory that the stars are changing. Oh my. The Skankurians have been joined the Cosmic Compact. It It is official that they the war to convert them to their ways has now resulted in them joining their ways. Well, there, we're still associates with the Federation. So, I'd say yes, that's friends. But, if they were to never, if they were to decide that we weren't friends, this just became much harder. <laughs> but it looks like it is improving and they're cooperative. They're not harming our relations anymore. I think this is going to be on the upswing. I think we'll be okay with these guys. They're trying to rival us still, but I think that'll go away shortly. We might even be able to join the Federation if we wanted. Um, I'm not sure if we want to yet. Construction complete. We, we Our color would turn purple. I don't know if we're ready for that. Oh. The Collective has ended their association status. The Collective does not like the Sakarians. These guys don't get along. Star crazy. All right, Drek. The crew of the ba Von Braum has made an unfortunate discovery. Just as they suspected, the pulsating plat pattern was observed. We observed from Horsham was in fact due to a sensory malfunction in Science Officer Drek's head. The Science Officer's behavior has turned erratic. He suffers delusions about the stars, broadcasting coded warnings about a coming apocalypse and of having been appointed protector of the realm. Dun, dun, dun. 
The crew believes he himself manipulated the ship's sensory data during one such psychotic spell. Science Officer Drek is now a medical po in a medical pod, heading back to Twitch, where he will receive proper treatment. Drek, I hate to say it, but I think we could have seen it coming. Thank you for your service, Protector of the Realm, Drek. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. We could get some society research. Twitch chat will deal with this, yes. <laughs> Yes, it will. We can say good luck or thank you for his service. Well, yes, yes. He is. He 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 finally gets the title he wanted all along, Protector of the Realm. From now on, I declare, whenever Drek returns, we need to all call him Protector of the Realm, Drek. That is what he wanted. He his his dream has come true. <laughs> thank you for your service. I took a screenshot. I'll, I'll have to show that to him. I'll put it up in the the Pastor Drewski Discord. <laughs> Unfortunately, his his very very short stint at head of research is now gone. He's. <laughs> uh, it was short lived. All right, Dutchie, it's your turn. You're getting old, but it's your turn. You are a champion of the people. Meanwhile, though, we actually do need to get another another scientist here because we're we're actually running short of scientists. It's your turn. I mean, the last two have died. What can I say? Or well, actually, one died. Gurner died. Drek went insane. I, I, you know, it's a tough job. It's a tough job. <laughs> Okay, but we do have some candidates. Actually, some of these are pretty good. So, Rashad here is a genius. Giving Empire... If, if this was somebody to put on the... If we were looking for somebody to not be duchy and be on the council, these are some nice bonuses. Or, we could just look for somebody to be a regular scientist. So, uh, if on the council, we could have a genius with extra minerals. We could have a genius who's old, uh, but is better at survey, or we could have a, a champion of people, just like Drek is, who also is a scientist that can be an archaeologist, and he's young. Uh, that means we keep him around longer. I th I'm actually tempted to get the older guy, not because it's in any way better, but this the survey speed, since this is our farthest guy out, we, we still want to scan all this. And it's that we're passing the stage of exploration. Even though there's a ton that we haven't explored, the other computer AI is getting to it. And so it's almost, can we race to finish it up? And I think we'll be fine with Dutchie being a counselor for now. This guy's the clearly the best pick for a counselor with the with the minerals and, and research speed, but I can't do that to Dutchie. He's been over, overlooked all game. Okay. Yep, you're out for now. We'll see you later. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, I hope to play some Mechabellum at the start, play some Stellaris later, just like today, and I hope tomorrow evening to actually be playing some uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. It's coming out tomorrow, and in the evening, we, we should have some friends online that we'll be co-op playing through. And my understanding is there is such a thing as Twitch drops to earn like some sort of cosmetic if you are watching a streamer. I think I have that enabled. And so if anyone else is also interested in Baldur's Gate 3, they can earn a, a in-game cosmetic by, by watching the stream. So that's the plan for tomorrow. All right, so like I said, this one is the best choice. This one's the youngest we'd keep around longer. I'm not I'm gonna pick the worst one because I want to this is not this is not an efficiency choice. This is a we're racing to get the rest of the stuff done choice. Like we've already met the calf aliens. There's somebody out here. And so we need to know where the bottlenecks are. 
our uh, Elias will come back and, and clean up and by scanning these other pathways, but it seems to me like this this is a dead end. This this probably connects, but it might be a dead end. But this is definitely a bottleneck of some sort. Anomaly found. Okay. Oh, but well, we need to name him or her, Julieta. Uh, our science officer has found an anomaly. It will require extensive probing, but could garner substantial find. Sure, check it out. But we do need to name. So. This is I'm I'm bad at this I'm bad at this, but uh, who has been here for a long time that has has been neglected, right? It could it could be Cardella. Maybe it is. If you haven't left yet, you're getting a scientist named after you. Hopefully, hopefully you get to see this. But there you go, in in honor of Cardella. I think the plague is almost over. Our neighbors want to do a trade. I, I would love to. I would absolutely love to. We just can't afford the influence. We're also sending baby Drewski to investigate that new fossilized remains from an hour ago on the stream we had uh one of our new planets found fossils that uh they all seem to be in the same area and have met a violent end so we're gonna find out what's the deal there baby drewski's on the case I want to get our fleet to the point where we can take on the 2,000 strength mining drones. Mass exorcism, oh no. And these, these, uh, the swarm here. All right, the worst effects of the plague have been contained. However, far from gratitude, the survivors are filled with righteous anger at the demonic outsiders who arrived to pollute their culture, targeted and stigmatized. Our aid workers have been forced to abandon the planet. While not yet fully aware of the truth, the local population now turns a nervous gaze to the stars. Ungrateful beings. The people of Excavus have a lowered opinion of us. We, we, we saved them. We gained progress towards our next insight technology. We gained a lot of society research. They gained a three-year righteous indignation modifier. Now they're attracted towards xenophobe. Their civilization gains some unity. I don't know how that affects them on their pre-FTLs. Um, it actually did shift its... No, it shifted its ethics towards xenophobe. Um, looks like spiritualist as well. But yeah, minus 150. Awareness to 80. Oh my. This was a disaster. Ungrateful. Mistakes may have been made. We should have let them die, is what we would have said if we weren't loving our little little buddies. All right, so now they're xenophobe. We just made them xenophile. So I think we need to once again indoctrinate them. Now they're high awareness. That's not great. We could try to spread disinformation, but I think we'll just leave it be. If we can just make them... Um, more like us. You know, it'll be... Yeah, we were trying to save them. We actually, they had a plague on the planet, and we spent the last 20 years giving them 25 food, 25 science, and 25 unity every single month for like 20 years, and this is how they thank us? <laughs> we We literally saved their planet. So, oh well, oh well. We are, I think we will try to re-indoctrinate the society. They're now xenophobe and material, they already were materialists, but this is very much opposite of us. And what we want to do is when they, when we do officially meet them, when we make first contact, uh, we are likely going to bring them under our wing as a protectorate. It's a, a nicer version of a vassal. And so we want to make them our, our official little buddies. But, uh, we also want to make them like us. So, so we'll do that. 
This is not in any way required. Again, if, if we were just playing the game to win, okay, we would, first of all, we'd just invade. Or we could just study them and not worry about manipulating their society. Like, th th this whole espionage thing is a, is a waste of resources and time. We're doing it because it's fun to to make them little buddies like us. It's a, it's a little brother situation here that we want to help them be guided. Alright. This is up in the north. Our mysterious neighbors up in the north. We've been able to, unable to discover much about the mysterious vessel in the Horsham system. The most convincing current hypothesis, based upon its behavior and the patterns of the still undecipherable signals we have intercede is that it belongs to a previously unknown spacefaring civilization we're redoubling our efforts to translate their language so that communications can be established keep at it friends in the north just a little bit more influence and we can re-indoctrinate these guys they need to know the truth oh however after the study of horsham one has concluded Science officer Cordellet reports that they have found the planet to be unusually rich in minerals. Discovery is made possible in large part thanks to, thanks to a certain member of the ISS Von Braun crew. Cordellet praises his, the protege highly. Highly, We can offer the protege a science officer position, gain a free scientist, or for 20 years get the promising crew modifier. Anomaly research speed increased. Anomaly discovery chance increased. This is actually very tough. We have room for a scientist. We do. We could we could get a scientist. We could build a new science ship and send him out there. Um, but the fact that we already have a guy up there who has a survey speed bonus, like he's the he's our guy to be scanning all that, and now he'd have a twenty percent bonus chance of finding more anomalies is really appealing. So I think we'll do that. I think we'll do that. We go read that in a second launch the indoctrinate society then has a request whether due to negligence incompetence or sheer misfortune den now struggle with their alloy supply without help it is very likely that millions will suffer we can give them a donation and they will remember this we could ask what they'll give in return, so we'd still give it to them, but we'd get a uh, extorted the Separatist modifier. Or if they want aid, they should just rejoin us, and a, and a whole population dies over there. Well, even though they disagree with our ways, they are our brothers. We're gonna we're gonna give them the the alloys. This is not expensive. We're trying to convert them back. Oh yeah, we won't be able to build our station that we were planning. We really need to get back out here, though. We've got to get to our Dacha system. There's a lot going on in that. Anomaly found. This other planet, and now some ruins. Impressive structures litter a small area on the surface of Diamar to, Diamu 2. Practically begging for some archaeological work. Well, yes, Elias, have at it. Now, if you're if you're just watching and you and you haven't really played Stellaris before, uh, there's a ton going on, and we could actually move the game at a faster pace, that sort of thing. And this is us not even acknowledging or or, or heading down the war path at all. Like you could have all this, and on top of this, you could have conquest and and battles and ships and and all sorts of things going on, and and it's actually very fun. Uh, we're just focusing on one, you know, the the expansion sort of area of the game. And so, it, there's just so much more. Alright, our archaeology. This is Baby Drewski. Our heir to the throne. Has found in the fossilized remains a section of floor at the ruins being excavated in a Hodgic Prime re recently gave way. Sending several of our archaeologists tumbling down a small chasm. Fortunately, they not only emerged unharmed from the incident, but also found several minor artifacts. Excellent. We got a, a bit of artifacts there. 
Might even have a look at what we can do with our artifacts. So, I've not looked at the screen yet. We didn't introduce this now for a while. But there are minor artifacts. And then there's such a thing as a relic. Now, we haven't found any relics or anything like that. But these are legendary things that might be out there. May or may not be even in the game. We don't know. Like, they're, they're random. But there are minor artifacts. We can sell them for a short-term game. This is, this is really inefficient. You'd sell 50 of them for 500 energy. We could use 100 of them and proclaim a religious revelation, which would give us a 500, almost 600 unity uh, boost. And for 10 years, a 50% spiritualist uh, attraction. So if we were having trouble with those pesky materialists, we might be able to convert them back. Uh, similarly, you could have 100 of these for a Celebrate Diversity, another Unity boost, but this time it's Xenophile. Or on a planet, we could do Museum Exhibits. This is a 10-year bonus on your planet that uh, helps generate Unity on the planet. And so there's different things. We might even, if we save up, we might even be able to discover a Precursor Insight. And that's actually what we're going to work on. Because at the beginning of the game, we knew that there was the Erasian uh, Concordat out here and we needed to discover six of artifacts of their people to find out the secret of their history so far we found a grand total of one so uh we could use some help finding those colony established okay this is our ice colony with our uh immigrants looks like this is a mining planet i even go ahead and build one. Oh. That was fast. Our efforts to shift the societal values in the Kareem civilization in a direction favored by us has produced favorable results. They're starting to open up again. Becoming more and more accepting. They will thank us one day. Yeah, culture shock. Yeah, high awareness. They will thank us one day, but when the, the month rolls over... Or actually, it already has. It did. They are no longer xenophobe, they're xenophile. Okay. We're going to accept that. Okay. I might have just been out of habit. I, I, I clicked through things, but I don't know if I missed things. Let's click. Let's read this. This was that planet that had the, um, the ruins on it. The structures are not as old as we first believed. It seemed to be a playground or an amusement park of some sort. Science officer Elias notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that, to the builder's eye, alien's eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array, or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us Druskites, it looks mostly like a place where you take your young and let them amuse themselves. We found Disneyland! How do governors work? Uh, okay, so look, we got some science there. So, governors... I have one on, on my main planet. How do governors work? This, this has changed. All these things change all the time. So, it used to be that you would have sectors and you'd put one governor for every sector and you would you would actually be really in trouble if you didn't put a governor in every sector the change to leaders means you have way less leaders overall you cannot afford to do that you cannot put governors everywhere so now it's more like you get a governor that specializes in one thing and you put him where he can belong but you still want that to be the capital of a sector so for example we have the sector of twitch it is our only sector, but it reaches, here's our, here's prime, our star prime, and it is reaching four jumps out from the star. So one, two, three, four, we're reaching out to Ditrium. Our new relic world planet will be in a, a, a outside sector, to be in our, our uh, fringe sector, I forget what it's called. And so we might make a new sector with that, but this is going to be outside our, of its reach. The capital of a sector determines where that radius goes. So if this wasn't my empire capital, I would potentially have a different capital in a different spot for a different reach of four, including more places. But regardless, the governor can get bonuses that affect the planet he's on, or, as uh, Duchy here has, bonuses that are empire-wide because he's on my council. So he has a specialty. Let me pull up the leader screen instead. Dutchie has a specialty. He's an industrialist. On the planet I specifically assigned him to, which is my capital, 
he is generating 5% bonus resources from jobs and reducing amenities needed by 10%. That's only affecting the planet he is on. Because he's part of my governing, he's my head of research, he's also giving five, uh, 7.5% happiness, ship build cost reduction. He's, he's adding that. That's the yellow symbol on those. But he's also level 4. Because he's level 4, he is giving 4 stability. He is reducing crime. He's increasing resources of productivity. He's doing all sorts of things that's level 4. This level 4 will translate to every other planet that he in the sector he is governing. So Gamma Draconis here could have its own governor, but he has a sector governor, Duchy, affecting him. And so the planet is getting benefit of the level four aspect. So it is reducing its crime and gaining resources, but it's not getting the planet specific buffs. That industrial thing is just for the capital. So the high level will go to the whole sector but the planet will go to specifically the planet you put them on. Duchy, very important, yes. <laughs> Amazing as a governor. Let's not get carried away. Wow, we actually have food now that we're not trying to cure that pox for the ungrateful guys over there. Looks like we're going to get another observation insight. A new a new tech from that again. Also, Elias, sensors report a shipwreck of unidentified origin sighted in orbit of Di Diamu. Well, check it out. That's this uh, neutron star thing. Or class F. Yep, insight, breakthrough imminent. Next time we have an observation event that would advance our insight, we will gain a new research option. Aha! The wreckage is identified. Our crew aboard the Sojourner report that the Diamu shipwreck appears to have been the result of an unexpected geomagnetic solar storm. The supply ship suffered a complete loss of life support systems and sustained inoperable damage, drifting until it entered Diamu's gravity well. There are no survivors. The ship's cargo hold does indeed contain a, no a notable amount of minerals. However, the captain of the ISS Sojourner cautions that the construction indicates Sakurian design. It's highly likely that the minerals belong to the Sakurian Holy Principality, and they may be displeased should we lay claim to their shipment. We can say we need their minerals. 300 minerals. 10 intel on them. But displeasing our neighbors. Or... We will not risk an altercation. Return the minerals, and this will please them and increase our influence, which we are so desperate to have. I think the, the choice is clear. Besides, we're friendly. So these guys are going to be happier that we just gave them back their stuff. Someone using a mining laser from orbit. Who, who is this? Who is this? We need to know. Cardella. Someone using a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago uh, carved a large body of writing into the surface of Portion 3. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. It's graffiti. Fascinating. Extra research from the planet. We'll study their language. Research complete. Oh, good. Fusion reactor. Um, survey speed, if we don't get it now, it'll never be useful. Or we can get the deflectors because we are trying to take on these drones and things. I think I'll get the survey speed. It is This is the only time in the game where this would be useful. Aha! The Sakurians! Druskites! We've received word of our downed supply ship's cargo. We'd like to extend our gratitude to you for taking the time to recover it without the need of Sakurian intervention. Our pleasure. 100 influence gained. We also gained a favor on them. 
ah, that could be useful later. We can hold that over their heads. And their, their plus 50 uh, opinion towards us. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Oh. Oh my. The species up here, the unknown species, not only is there a planet, but there are ships and stations and an observation post. This place is occupied. All right, Elias, back down here. A19000 periodically spews an alarmingly electric eclectic mix of particles and irradiation into the void. Well, you better check that out. Okay, but this place is occupied and there's very little chance that we can get up to Horsham in time. We did just get some some influence. We need to start spending it. At the very least, if we can get to either Vermilion or the Maw of the Truthsayer, those are those are other bottlenecks we can claim. Seems the scientists on our partner planet have made several new and admittedly insightful breakthroughs in the field of terraforming. Despite their periodical tendencies, it's fair to say that in this case, their technology has outstripped our own achievements. They're willing to share their insights. In exchange for us ceasing our current first contact procedures, a steep price. We are trying to do first contact. No, but we would get terrestrial sculpting. That's so great. We'll comply. We love our alien friends, but we actually need to be able to convert some of these planets. This arid world, we could convert it to a, a one of our own. I guess we don't need it that bad. I think the arid world is the only one left. Why? Another thing. Our underground species. The neighbors living in the subterranean civilization at Cider. After seeing the advanced weapons that our security forces are equipped with, several generals from the subterranean alien empire on Cider Prime have come forward requesting that we share some of our military technology. Our own officers are hesitant to do this, as it would make the aliens more difficult to defeat in battle, should it ever come to that. If we re refuse the request, however, the aliens are certain to view it as an insult. Arming savages with modern weapons would be a bad idea, or... They are our friends! Share what we can! Wow. Minus 30% engineering research for 10 years. But our relations will be improved. We are xenophile, so we, they're friends, but we're pacifists. I'm surprised our, our security guys were armed in the first place. Hmm. Well, I think we'll go the friendly route. Mostly because the other one is is framed in a arming savages way, like it, it it's framed in a way that is uh, looking down on them, and uh, the other one is clearly framed in a way that they're they're our friends, you know, it's innocent. So I think we'll go with that, but there might be consequences. There might be consequences. We'll share what we can. Oh, our fossilized remains. Archaeologists have unearthed more and more fossilized remains in the valley. Remember, this is down here. Baby Drewski working on the, the remains. All the, the fossils were came to a violent end. The count is now up to 26 distinct sapient species, none of them native to Hokaja Prime. Those fossils have been sufficiently preserved to determine a cause of death that uh, all point towards physical trauma inflicted by blades spears or arrows not a single specimen appears to have been felled by the equivalent of a modern projectile or energy weapons 
The ruins of a small structure of some sort have been found near the entrance of the valley. It appears to originate from the same time period as the fossils. Perhaps it will shed some light on things. Well, curious. We shall continue. Another request to share technology will have to decline. And another pre-FTL. This is actually where the observation station in our new neighbors to the north uh, are. They have their own pre-FTL friends. I forgot about this. Ages ago, back in the first episode, we had a initiative proposed by our people to survey habitable worlds. And we just finished it. There are surveys... Through our surveys of habitable worlds, our biologists have collected a vast amount of data on alien life forms. Many of our older theories on the development of life have been disproved, and our scientific community has had to build new models from scratch. Our most interesting findings are being displayed at the newly dedicated Museum of Exobiology on Twitch. Check out the channel. The public is enthralled, and many donations have come in to aid in the continued search of strange life forms. We have gained a huge amount of society research and a non-insignificant amount of energy credits for doing what we were doing anyway, exploring the galaxy. Very nice. Construction complete. That's right. This planet had a space-time anomaly from the uh, labyrinth. That was that was yesterday as well. All right. We now have one construction ship is going to go march north as quickly as he can, which is already going to be limited from our influence. The other one is going to catch up and build the uh, stations behind it. Complete. Cardell has leveled. Okay. Now he's not on our on our council. So even though surely he's a genius, it won't benefit us unless he's on the council. So we're not going to do that. We could go where he is venerated. This would give a plus 2 unity every month. We're gaining 80 though. So so 2 is is really not a significant amount. However, we could instead have two alloy the month. That's something we're only getting 22. That's a that's a much bigger percentage. And finally, he could be a politician. Again, that's a counselor thing. Not using it. Absolutely, he is our scrapper. Now, since this is already discovered, we're going to backtrack and see if there's another route. I don't think so. Those look like those are dead ends. So I think this is all part of this section with Horsham the bottleneck to it we'd really like to get up there and there's no way we're gaining influence fast enough to, to, to do it now we did get a fusion reactor for our ships and because of the extra power we can give them cloaking now this wouldn't be a long term useful thing but temporarily we could do that so why not it'll be fun we can now cloak our ships. Once they upgrade. Oh, no, we can't. We don't have uh, exotic gas. Can we buy any? No. Uh, ruins are fun. Got to change the design back. So, certain things require advanced strategic resources. Um, I forgot, a cloaking device actually has a cost of strategic resource, this uh, exotic gas. And we're early enough in the game, we're only 26 years into the game, so we're, we're, we have not actually found the ability to harvest exotic gas. So we can't equip that, sadly. We can, we can equip it on the design, but we can't upgrade to it because we don't have any gas to do so. 
Once once the gas, once we find our first gas, we can then purchase some from the market, but until we find it, we can't actually purchase it. And I'm not going to worry about upgrading these guys with just the reactor. We've got a, we've got shields coming, I think. Nope, armor coming. But I can finish the fleet. Gurner asking the tough questions. Um, we it was through an event. Uh, we learned we learned how to make a cloaking device. We just can't turn the thing on. <laughs> That's basically what happened. All right, illicit matter. This is uh, Elias yet again. The sojourner finds a disturbing tangle of technology hidden in a deep crater in the asteroid's surface. Evidently, someone has, by rather simplistic means, managed to stabilize a one-way wormhole. It's a stargate. Science officer Elias suggests that the, the asteroid is an exit point. The other end opens up somewhere in uncharted space some light years away from a black hole. And small quantities of dark matter are leaking, being siphoned through the wormhole. Whoever set this up seems to have abandoned the operation. Fascinating. A dark matter deposit has been, has been discovered. This is our first dark matter. So now we've discovered a previously unknown strategic resource dubbed dark matter. It's an exotic substance that has many properties that seemingly defy several natural laws. It could potentially revolutionize the sciences. We don't yet have the means to extract it, but we should seriously consider establishing control over the system. Agreed. We need to get up there. Actually, yes, you're correct. We do have a job. We, we kind of leapfrogged the text of discovery. You're correct. We do have a job that generates it. It was another event. That's why it leapfrogged that that uh, message. Research complete. We have proven, beyond the doubt, any doubt, that the galaxy is filled with life. Apart from the dominant species and nations, there are many others who traverse the stars. From time to time, exceptional individuals may arise and shake the foundations of galactic power. If we can harness their ambition, these renowned leaders may be willing to join our cause. This is from the Galactic Paragons DLC. We now can hire, potentially hire, renowned leaders. These are going to be leaders that are above and beyond the normal leaders that the game produces. One of the coolest things about the DLC. Gurner wants to know how much have we built up? We should have some. 34. Yeah, we're only getting um, plus 0. 0.22 a turn. But that's 34. And what's what's kind of nice is in a pinch, we could actually sell some of it for cash. 25 is worth 350-ish energy. So, you know, we're going to keep saving it up. But we do have some of it. A size 25 Tundra World. That's max size. Oh, we finished our tech. Yes, this was the... Oh my. Okay. Lots of things. We finished the tech. This was what gives the renowned leaders. That's good. We have an event. We're going to check it out in just a moment. Terrestrial sculpting. Yes, let's go ahead and get that done. All right. The doorway. Yet another event on a yet another world. This is our Arctic world being colonized by the Laganchus people. What can only be described as a dimensional portal has been discovered in a remote location on Nithisgal Prime. Weather prediction algorithms noticed a strange air current which has evident evidentially determined to be caused by the slight leakage of atmosphere into the portal. The rate of loss is far too small for it to make any difference to life on the planet, but the very existence of this portal raises some disturbing questions, such as, what does it lead to? Where does it lead to? And could something come through the portal from the other side? Intriguing. A new special project to probe the dimensional portal on Nithis Nithiskal Prime. Also, the, the planet itself has new jobs available for the Pops, dimensional portal researchers. Situation Intriguing. 
There's the researchers. They're going to develop a massive amount of physics research once they get rolling on that. Situation log. Probe the dimensional portal. Well, we must. Maybe there's friends on the other side. Gurner wants to be resurrected. Volunteers to go through first. If only it could. We're going to research the dimensional portal. We also potentially... What are we doing right now? Armor? Let, why not? Let's go ahead and, and research the drones. If you recall, when we first studied the drones that they existed, we then uh, gained the ability to learn how they do what they do. And so that's what that is. We did just get some... I'm going to cancel that and move up. We got some influence, so we're going to move forward. We're in a race. It's it's really good to get up to Horsham and claim all of this. Since their neighbors are right there. Cream societal shift. They've shifted again. We've opened the eyes to a spiritual realm they never knew was there. They finally have something to believe in, and their society is all the richer. Yes, yes, of course it is. Wonderful. These people, excellent. Yes, they're still authoritarian, but they're xenophile and spiritual. I think that, yeah, the indoctrinate society is still going. <laughs> so, all right. Keep it up. Keep it up. It's very productive. They will learn to love us. Oh, this one's running out of uh, housing. Now that we're getting a lot of consumer goods, before we were we were short consumer goods. We're getting quite a few now. What we might do? System survey complete. It's a nice world. Moats. What we might do is is find one of our planets that was getting an extra. You. This civilian industries is probably unnecessary now that we're up to plus 25. He's a specialty uh, agriculture world. Let's replace this with alloys instead. Actually, let's replace it with a monument. Let's let's focus on the unity. We're we're not militarist. We're we're still gonna gonna try to develop the the unity side of things. This world, though, will continue with the industry because we are the the uh, monument that's going to consume six consumer goods. We're, this guy's just going to continue to focus on consumer goods. All right, next story bit from Hakaja Prime, our, our archaeological dig. The excavation of the ancient structure. If you recall, there was all these species getting killed off by hand-to-hand -hand combat. The ancient structure found near the valley's entrance is proceeding according to plan. Many artifacts have been discovered, most of which seem to be variations of hunting weapons and trophies. A partially translated sign, which appears to denote the name of the structure, reads Valley of MacVail, Hunting Lodge Primus. A hunting lodge. Curious. We read before, though, that these were sapient creatures. Could it be a hunt of the most dangerous game? Ooh, the former megalopolis planet. Yes, let's check it out. We're colonizing it right now. There it is. We're colonizing it, and then we will do some serious research once we get there. Like, once it's done. It's kind of a cool place. So, that's going to be a big part of our future, because we need more research. Cool bonuses? We don't know. Maybe. There actually very well could be event change. Most of our planets actually have had something happen. Uh, but without event change, we do have a cool bonus. There's an initial 15% to all research on the planet. And then once we clear out some ruins on the planet, there's another 15%. So a 30% science bonus there. Plus the place is huge. And because it's so huge, uh, we can have basically everybody there working on science. It'll be a massive uh, research hub, more so than our capital. So we're going to focus all of our science there if possible. And, and so we should actually get quite a bit.
Now, one nice thing about our fleet, even if we're not going to use it for fighting, is it's actually helping us generate influence. It is it is generating a power projection stat. Let's see if I can find where it shows it. Complete. So our fleet, right here, we can affect, uh, we can support up to forty-one ships. So actually, we we very well should make a second fleet of twenty. We can only put twenty in a fleet at the moment. That's another thing, uh, but we can have forty-one ships total. And currently, our power projection is is uh, gaining influence because our fleet is providing naval coverage of the empire. In relation to the empire's size, we have a certain amount of fleet. It's not great, but it is above zero. So what we can do is if we double our fleet size, we should actually get more influence per turn. Yes, actually it is. This is an amazing bottleneck for us. So that that really is the only way into our space. Like this is highly unusual. If you look at the, the map, you can kind of see there's these, these arms of the galaxy, six arms to the galaxy. We started on the tip of one arm and it actually was not connected to the rest of the arm, which is where our, our hive mind buddy is. Instead, it connected to the next arm over, and then we had this bottleneck here. So this was highly unusual, and then we were really fortunate to claim it. But there is a north way in. So the other entrance is right here at Horsham. This is already claimed. We don't know who, but this is already claimed. There's somebody here. If possible, we'd love to get to Horsham because that would be claim everything behind it, including these these constellations. But if we can't, we'll still settle for at least this Maw of the Trusayer and the Vermilion, one or the other, because that's the bottleneck for the rest of our area. You know, we'd love to came up here because then that's a bottleneck protecting this world, any other potential worlds, anything else going on. It's just influence is our bottleneck on claiming. And I think that's enough justification to actually build a second fleet to get that much more influence. We're in a race. So what we'll do, we'll go to Fleet Manager. Our current fleet is at its maximum size of 20. We can increase that with technology, but 20. Uh, and so we're just going to hit this button to copy template. Now we have a second fleet with a maximum size of 20. There's zero ships built. We can afford to build five. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and do that. So we'll build five into that fleet. The added bonus is that we'll use the ships to actually clear out these mining drones. Yes, it'll help in fleet power. And so that actually... The AI doesn't gauge your potential for a fleet. It gauges your fleet right now. So if we have a hostile neighbor and we have zero fleet, they'll say this is an easy pickings. We might have in the bank, we might have 20,000 alloys and we can make a fleet like nothing out of, you know, just, just build up a fleet, defend ourselves, win the war... But the war could have been prevented if we had a standing army. And so this is helpful even for pacifists to actually have a fleet because it keeps you at peace. Yeah, exactly. The AI thinks it's overwhelming. Now me even doubling my fleet size will not even make that overwhelming go away. The, the AI usually just gets, just gets carried away. Although we can see their fleets, so we can get it a little bit. These guys are considered superior, one step below overwhelming. And their fleet size, roughly, is about 3,000, 3,200, putting those three numbers together there. Our fleet size is half that. So I guess we would be in the runnings with these guys uh, if we double our fleet. The problem is these guys just lost a big a big war. So this is they're probably not the best gauge of an average empire. Still, it's the best we got. All right, we're trying to get up north. We can pick... This one or this one, we'll just go to Hilito because it leads to more important thing. We're going to park him there, waiting for the influence. Our second construction ship will fill in the, the mining stations and all that. System survey complete. I just was holding shift and, built, and make a, a queue for him to do. Very useful. Okay, second fleet starting. First fleet, second fleet. If we hadn't picked a boring human set of names, there actually would be a lot more creative names happening. Ooh, a new tradition. This is an important moment because we can actually adopt a whole new category. This is huge. 
these these traditions really determine what what we become as a people. For example, if we really want to make friends, we could go the diplomacy route. This would allow us to have extra agenda, extra edicts that we do. Our diplomatic influence cost, remember how we had those deals? Those costs would be reduced by half. If we can adopt all of the di diplomacy tradition, our diplomatic weight, which is a stat that hasn't come up yet, we'll get to that some other time, will increase. Envoys will increase, that means we can make more friends sending them to other, other empires. But that's just that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. We can have embassies giving us unity. We do have a bunch of embassies that would generate unity. Elder empires would trust us more. Elder empires would be more likely to accept our uh, proposals and potentially even gain favors with them. You can use favors to force them to accept a proposal that they otherwise wouldn't because you can use the favor. And we can build federations. Now, there's already a federation next to us and we're getting along pretty well. Before we join them, I'd like to meet what's on the north side. Are they friend or foe? If they're extra nice, we might decide that those are our friends that we want to make a federation with. And then finally, you can actually have a federation fleet, and this would let you contribute more to it. Um, but we want to know who's up here before we make any commitment down here. That's the thinking. Now, diplomacy is really attractive just because that's kind of the game we're playing. But in the grand scheme of things, if you were playing to win, you might not pick Diplomacy as your second one. Okay? So I want to at least point out, this is not necessarily your second pick. It could be if you're desperately trying to stay at peace with everyone because you're playing in Grand Admiral difficulty. Which we're doing. Um, but we could do other things. For example, we could be expansionist. This would make our Starbase influence cost reduced. New colonies will start with extra populations, population growth speed. There's, those sound quite nice. The problem is, we've already spent we, half, we've already explored and expanded to half of what we would have done. The, the value of this tree is already diminished because we didn't go with it first. So this is, this is out. We're not doing this whatsoever. Um, another one that we might consider would be mercantile. This one emphasizes trade and, and money, and of course you want to have friends to, to be trading with, that sort of thing. But it's usually internal trade, commercial zones, trade value. Very, very powerful here. It, it unlocks the Trade League Federation type. Instead of a basic federation, you can have a Trade League. That happens to be the most powerful federation type if you're playing to win. But again, I don't think that's us yet. We're not really... None of our planets are generating trade. Like, we're just not good at that. Here's what you might do at this stage of the game, is prosperity. Prosperity is just an all-around, solid choice. Mining stations, 20% more output. Half our stuff that we're getting is from stations. Actually, more than half. Our minerals, of our 52 minerals we're getting a turn, jobs are consuming a bunch, we're actually generating 127 minerals. 79, 80 really of our minerals, so two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, whatever, of our minerals are um, are coming from stations. We can increase that by 20%, including as well uh, energy credits. So that's off the top. We would just get mining increased. But then there is uh, upkeep of your buildings reduced, upkeep from jobs reduced. Uh, output from your specialists, so that's your scientists, that's your uh, factory workers, all those, they, they produce more. Um, buildings provide more housing, this is great. And then 5% of all jobs increased uh, per production. So this, this is just all around, your empire gets to do what it's doing more. Like that's just a solid pick, every empire should have this at some point. The sooner the better because you get just, it's going to help you get everything else faster. Some of these are grayed out, so we won't talk about them. There is a offensive tech tree. There's a defensive tech tree. We could potentially get the unyielding defensive if we think that we're going to get attacked. We're going to trust in our politics. There's a, sci a spying one. Uh, this is a internal politics uh, kind of unity thing. Empire size, stability, governing ethics. We're skipping it. I think, and then and then Discovery is, is a scientific one, and, and again, it's very strong, but part of its benefit is the survey speed and things like that. We're missing out on that. The map, the stars, is a chance to find things out there. We've done most of our exploration. So we're going to skip this one too, even though this is a very solid pick. 
I think the theology tradition that is going to be one of these grayed out ones. We'll talk about those later. But that is, there is a tradition that will focus on that. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hang tight. Eventually. I think we're going to go diplomacy. I think it's going to be necessary to maintain friendships and it's thematically appropriate. So I think for our run here, we're going to try to be friends with the galaxy. This is not something I normally pick in a normal game. A normal game, I'll probably do the prosperity one here. Just want to point that out, that that's such a strong, solid choice. I think every empire should probably pick that as their number two, if not number one, uh, tradition. Just looking, it has the, the building things, like these little message things that make me want to click it. It's the OCD. <laughs> yeah, we're building a district already. Oh, council agenda. So so we, we're not going to use it yet, but because we now have the diplomacy tree, we can now potentially build relations, which will gain trust growth and diplomatic weight uh, with other empires. So we can actually really force other people to like us quite a bit. Um, and then it also should give us, once the month rolls over, it should give us uh, less cost of our migration pact. So instead of 0.25, should be point one two yeah one two five it just doesn't go to third decimal life form encountered. oh my okay elias found more mining drones we're gonna work on trying to clear those out eventually here incoming transmission these agreements are cheaper now so this is actually much more interesting i don't think i'm gonna accept the first one we might shop around first let's go to our contact screen because we can, we can kind of afford it. Actually, let's wait. When we get to the bottleneck and claim it, because influence is all important right now, when we get to the bottleneck and claim it, then we'll come back and we'll talk about deals with everybody. Responding to a text. One moment. Okay. Anomaly found. A colossal impact crater. Hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. Cardella. Alright, check it out. We were making a 3.7, was it? Influence. Now we're up to 3. Uh, Eight six uh, at the end of it after the the one two is gone yeah so we're getting more famine we've been approached by a delegation from the subterranean aliens on Cider Prime it seems their empire has fallen on hard times recently and they're facing the threat of a famine they're pleading with us to provide whatever assistance we can well of course we can help it's just fifty food we got two and a half thousand yes yes they're not fending for themselves we like aliens. Relations will be improved. Ah. Misclicking left and right, and then things happen. Technologies continue to progress. These are our little buddies. As industrialization takes their society to new heights, this their most recent breakthrough in engineering has revolutionized their use of transportation and brought them a step closer to planetary unification. Defying our prediction models, Exodus 4 is now a uni unified world. Pooling their resources, the people have prioritized the well-being of the global community and living standards are rising. Remarkable, this is highly uncommon. Or, they have more resources than they need. <laughs> we could alleviate them some, some of the resources. 
No, 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 no. We're proud of them. We get an in, uh, insight technology. Okay. Too many things. Too many things. This was the impact crater that Elias just checked out. No, oh, Cardella just checked out. A large mineral-rich asteroid collided with it at some point during a previous thousand years in what must have been a major impact event. An abundance of minerals can now be found on the planet in the vicinity of the impact crater. Well, okay. Extra minerals. Yeah, it's probably due to our guidance. I bet you're right. Meanwhile, my cat knocked a bunch of stuff off of my, my uh, second desk here. Of course he did. All right, the the claiming the systems here is progressing. We're trying our best. Gonna keep making ships. To the, we actually, I don't like doing it, but I might. I'm tempted to buy alloys. I'm not gonna do it. We just finished our colony. You know what? Let's let's see if we have a scientist type governor we could put on the on the planet here. Another governor. This is our relic world. So this is a highly special world here. Our candidates are... We could just move Duchy, but we're not going to. We have some uh, governors that would be helping out with army build speed on the Empire side of things. Extra food on the planet. Extra trade on the planet. Remember, we're looking for science. More food. Lower crime rates. More trade. Ship building, edicts upkeep. This is again if they're on the govern on the council, which we're not working on, and trade again. These are not things that will help the goal of that planet. So we're actually going to wait. There's we could also hire in some of our uh, external pools. So this is the brethren who don't have our policies of extra leader focus. He's just got a simple thing here, or the aliens that we have a migration treaty. We could bring in one of their leaders, um, but no. Not going to. Now the planet has several features. One of which uh, we can clear all the dots. It's very expensive, but we can clear out these features. There's some crumbling mining tunnels, flooded reactor pits, shattered solar array, massive crevice, and a collapsed spire. These ruins are actually blocking most of the resources on the planet. The mining tunnels are blocking six out of the twelve. No, six out of the, the, goodness, math. Six out of the nine mining districts are blocked. We could spend a thousand to, to clear that up, but we're not really here for the mines. Same with the generator districts. All of the generator districts are currently blocked, but we're not here for the generators. We're here for science. If we can clear the collapsed spire, not only will the, uh, the blocker be gone and we'll be able to build more buildings on the planet, but, not buildings, but sectors, districts but will unlock the bonus 15 percent science and on top of it automatically get eight researcher jobs that's the equivalent of four researchers labs that is more than what we have in our capital with the added bonus of them having 30 percent science bonus this is a no-brainer but it is expensive 2000 uh, energy we're doing it Just go there. Yeah, we actually should move Pops there. Um, we The problem is the only planet is Twitch that can actually afford to send Pops because the rest are just getting on their feet. We actually need all the consumer good guys. Trying to get the alloy guys. This guy actually has these... Uh, Here, focus that. We, we don't need you to be a soldier. Um, we actually do have an extra pop here. But these guys want to be scientists too. 20% research bonus. What if we resettle one from here? Send our soldier. He's going to be a scientist eventually. Clone some dudes. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> but you're right. 
Uh, we could send more, but right now there's not much housing. Like we gotta build housing, but first we gotta finish the spire. Anomaly found. An asteroid recently suffered an impact from another body within the asteroid belt, which resulted in a slightly changed orbit and a massive crater from the surface. I guess we need to look into that. Nice. Our influence has gone above the four mark, so we're still we're just gaining that. Oh my! A ruined century array. Which uh, there you are. There you are. Elias has found this at some point in galactic history. The Magum system evidently supported a vast orbital infrastructure of unusual proportions, which has since been systematically demolished. There are large concentrations of debris in geostationary orbits around most of the planetary bodies in the system, including several massive space station hulks. The largest of these is a colossal century array. Our initial scan suggests that when it was operational, this array was powerful enough to provide real-time sensor coverage over the entire galaxy. It is a megastructure. Fascinating. Fascinating. There it is. It is behind the choke point. You've got to get up there. <laughs> we, we need more influence. But also... This might not be... Horsham might not be the only choke point. We don't know. This star might connect to the other arm. We're, we're heading that way. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, it's just a trivial engineering job. <laughs> no problem. Scan the entire galaxy in real time. Oh, this was the asteroid collision. Upon closer examination, we've discovered that a smaller asteroid consisting of almost entirely of precious metals recently collided with the, with the asteroid. This small but dense cache of metals was hidden just beneath the asteroid's surface. But now that it's been discovered, it should be accessible to mining. A lucky find. All right, extra minerals. I would have made that alloy personally because it said metals, but you know. It's okay, it's bonus stuff. I'm going to keep building ships because little by little, it's a little bit more influence at a time. Our power projection is getting us 1.14 influence, and we're desperate trying to get up here in time. Oh, we're allowed to, to continue our first contact. Remember, we weren't allowed for a while there because we were we got the terraforming tech from our neighbors. Den wasn't happy about us contacting more people. Our attempts to learn more about calf aliens have so far been in vain. While we were easily able to ascertain that they actually that they clearly form part of a technologically advanced alien civilization, further facts have proven elusive, as they seem to be grow going to considerable effort to prevent us and any other eavesdroppers from intercepting any signals from them. We have therefore only managed to intercept small fragments of their language so far. However, from glimpses we've gleaned, our linguists are confident that they will be able to decipher their communications if we can just acquire a greater sample size. Hmm, there they are. Well, they too are not pretty, but we'll love them just the same. Unfortunately, they are taking a hostile stance. This could be trouble. It could be trouble. The dimensional portal! Remember, we were researching it. This is on our ice world. The dimensional portal on Nutskiskal Prime leads to a dimension of pure energy, a small amount of which can be siphoned through the portal for our own use. The procedures used to handle discrete packets of energy also have potential use as a weapon system. Fascinating! Engineering research gained. Plasma thrower research gained. Dimensional portal researchers will now also produce energy. Now, this is something that is interesting because there's 
sense. There's a number of possible outcomes that this place could have gone to, and so we got one of the better ones. But uh, there's there's quite a few things that it could have been. Special project complete. And our mining drones. We've we've researched how they do what they do when not posturing with their mining lasers aimed at Druska's ships. The drones appear steadfast and dumbly hardworking, hacking away at mineral-poor asteroids for want of something better to do. What is more interesting is that the drones that are, are not completely silent, contrary to early assumptions, they emit signal pings. Though extremely infrequently and at a wavelength hard to isolate from the background noise, if there's anyone left to receive these pings, it uh, may be a mystery for another time. So we have a response to this information. We can say that they are easy prey, increasing our damage against all ancient mining drones by 33 percent not bad we, we're gearing up to have to fight some or point out that that's some fascinating automata and our our drone mining techniques modifiers added to the empire for the rest of the game 10 percent more mining station mineral output we pointed out earlier massive amount of our of our mineral income is from mining drones this is, yeah, pacifist would never say easy prey. This is a clear choice. Clear choice. So this is going to jump up from 83 to 90 or so on the stations per production. Uh, specifically the stations. The, the total will, will go up, you know, to 75 or so. Once the month rolls over. There it goes, 76. And of course, that'll stay with us all game. Anomaly found. Elias, our science officers found an anomaly. It would require extensive probing, but could garner a substantial find. Very descriptive, sir. You're not telling us much, but go ahead. You have a go. Um... I do want to keep building up our fleet. We want the influence. We want to take on those those drones, but we do need some alloy for the actual outposts that we're building too. So keeping, keeping an eye on that. Getting close for the next station. Oops. Is my construction may wait? Okay, so I, something I never explained about how the game works on expanding. Absolutely, I want to get up to that choke point, and I could just park them up there. And technically, you can build up there. The problem is, the influence cost increases for every jump away from your borders. So right now, the base cost is seventy-five. So this one is going to be seventy-five. The next one, one hundred and fifty. The next one. And so at 225, it, at 75 for every jump towards the point we want to get to, we would have to pay whatever that is, 500 influence to build that. Or we can build one at a time, paying the same amount of influence and getting the resources along the way. Um, the worst part is if we went out there and just built that straight away. Like, if we had the influence in the bank, that actually would be the best thing because it is a race. We could build it right now. The downside of doing that would mean we still have to pay the influence of every step along the way. So in addition to this costing 500, the rest of them still cost, you know, 75 and 150. Like we'd still have to pay more total, but we'd get the bottleneck. We don't have a pool of influence to pull from though. So we're going to build our way out and, uh, and it's taking time. Now there actually are some uh, origins and game setups that you could do that reduce that influence cost significantly. To where claiming bottlenecks is like, that's your whole thing. You can get all the important bottlenecks, spend the whole rest of the game filling in all of the rest of the stuff you claimed uh, by, you know, your backfill here. That's just not us. And so we're, we're having to, to take it the slow way, but we're trying. I don't remember. Oh, this was the, the nondescript something that that uh, Elias had found having probed the frozen landscapes of the moon we think we have struck something big science officer Elias speaks of a bacterium life form unlike any other 
it bonds with other individuals from large to form large blankets that are durable yet light and also acts like solar cells they absorb solar energy with a surprisingly low efficiency loss percentage most likely a result of evolution favoring those who could gather more heat in the harsh climate our researchers back home could surely find some use of this information we could find out if it can improve energy production or try and find military use again because we're role playing this is a simple choice we're going to try to improve energy but we don't know what it'll do it'll tell us momentarily construction complete here we go our energy development researchers have made progress with the samples we sent them they have been able to develop a new type of solar cell using the organisms as a template it's much more efficient at storing energy and will provide a boost to all our power plants. Marvelous! 5% energy credits from jobs across the empire. Very nice. Nice little bonus. Seventy-four. Locker cleared. Less than one point short. Have to wait a whole another month. Ooh, that message of blocker cleared. The only blocker we were working on was this collapsed spire. The central spire is now operational, so we're getting the extra fifteen percent of of research and eight researcher jobs. Now we don't have the population, but we can resettle one just to kind of get it going some more. We're going to need to build some housing for everybody. So if we send somebody from home, I think we can afford to send a farmer. That'll make him a researcher. It's a little, it's not much, but it's a start. So the next thing we're going to do is build a city district, which focuses on housing. We have the jobs. What we don't have is housing. So this will give us five housing, an extra clerk job, and it'll actually open up another building slot here, which could mean even more research labs. System survey complete. Here's our starbase. Take the moment to build a couple more ships. Our power projection is 1.2. We'll see if that goes up. It'll be a small amount. Elias has found something else. An ancient orbital shipyard. Drifts in silence above this world. It has suffered significant battle damage. And entire sections of the facility are missing. Check it out. Leader pool refreshed. Remember, we were looking at possibly getting a governor. Ooh. We could get a governor that it helps out with blocker clear speed and blocker cost. If you recall, we just spent a whole bunch on a blocker down here, but there's still 4,000 more we could spend. We could drop that down by 25%. It could save a thousand energy if we put a governor here who happens to be good at clearing blockers. The problem is once we've cleared it, that's it for the, like that's his, there's no more blockers. Um, I don't know if any of the science benefits still exist for individual planets. They might only be empire wide science benefits now, but it's something. And we could get our 29-year-old. He'd live for a while. It might be worth it just for the blocker clear. And we have the, the, the room and the capacity. So maybe we do. I don't know if this is Gurn or Resurrected, though. That's a big, that's a big ask. <laughs> oh all right it's a it's i'm sorry gurner but we're not necromancers we we can't bring gurner back the the this 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 governor Cannot be good. So that means, no matter what we pick, 
this governor is in fact not Gurner. <laughs> right? <laughs> So it's a true statement, and it also just happens to match your full name, which I neglected to call you from the beginning. <laughs> Username already taken, yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay, something big just happened. This is, this is part of it, but there's something bigger. This was our excavation, if you recall. This is our... Um, our, our hunting grounds world. Continue excavations near the hunting lodge have provided more details. Hekoja Prime and the Valley of Magdak Makval specifically served as a hunting reserve for the ruling warrior class of an interstell interstellar polity known as the Retrox Domain. The Retrox, a predatory avian species, periodically collected random individuals from the many subjugated alien civilizations under their rule. These aliens were then hunted down and killed in the wilderness of Makval, according to the rituals that governed their society. This tradition lasted several centuries until the domain eventually, eventually succumbed to an undefined outside threat. Curious. That's not what I was super excited about, but that is interesting. What I'm excited about is we have been contacted. This is a galactic paragon. This is this is strictly from the DLC. Lyster Singh, a renowned paragon. Facial recognition scans identified the individual as as Lyster Singh, a, a a wanted pirate. Smiling slyly, he offers a polite nod. Greetings, I'm Captain Lysator. I come to you with an offer. I command three ships and a ragtag crew of outcasts. Until now, we have worked independently. That said, times are changing. We are ready to join a larger enterprise. If you grant us full pardons for our so-called crimes and a safe haven within your borders, we will work for you. What do you say? Shall we draw up a contract? Don't trust them. <laughs> but we like aliens. <laughs> Let's ask some questions. Let's at least do our due diligence. What do we have? What need do we have for a pirate? Well, as to that, I prefer to think of myself as a privateer. That's not... Eh, that happened, right? Some things you just can't learn in an academy. My skills lie in finding opportunities. When to strike, when to retreat. What bait to dangle in front of a foe. We hit hard where it hurts and make off with the loot before anyone realizes what happened. Why do you wish to join us? My crew is tired of living a life on the run. We seek a safe harbor. Your empire seems open enough to allow a collection of outcasts into your ranks. Freebooting has a cost has cost us much. We're not exactly looking to settle down, but a patron of your caliber could take a certain load off. Why should we trust you? Open enough. No reason other than the word of a scoundrel, if that's not enough. Fare thee well. I propose a deal, nothing more. Tell us about your crew. Escaped slaves, bounty hunters, soldiers of fortune, even the odd chef. From all comers of the galaxy, they answered the call of liberty and adventure. Over the years, we've grown into a family of sorts. I welcome anyone. As long as they follow my orders and don't try to eat any of the others, I consider it an honor to lead them. You don't think they just want to hang out? Now, this is actually an admiral. Um, and he is a tactician, so he, he is a specifically a, a defensive admiral, so hull points, disengagement chance, that sort of thing. And he has a special trait that's unique to him. So G.E. Toe, our existing admiral, uh, does not have access to this. Uh, it's a destiny trait, the guerrilla tactician. So he has two bonus disengagement opportunities. That's pretty incredible. So whatever fleet he's leading, you can almost never kill the things. A bonus 10% chance to evade, 50% less time missing in action. So if he does have to retreat, he'll come back. His The fleet command limit is reduced, so you actually have to have a smaller fleet. So normally we can only hold 20 ships in a fleet. His would be 15. And plus 2 to cloaking strength. He's growing on you. <laughs> 
He has an extra bonus. A material liberator, being a pirate and all. Every enemy ship destroyed gives us six energy credits. So we'll get paid. Additionally, this is a, a regular trait, but he's also a trickster, which is further bonus on combat disengagement chance, emergency FTL damage risk. So again, if we have to hit and run, uh, he'll survive it. But he does have a negative. He is has some negligence. This one's rough. Minus 10% armor and shield hit points. So even though um, he has a good chance to get away, he might have to use it more often because the ships are weaker. Now this would put us over our max because we just got not Gurner and our leaders. So it would actually put us over capacity. He would be an 8 upkeep, but then all of them would be like 15% more upkeep. So our current upkeep on leaders is 18. We could afford it. Gito, we're looking at your replacement. <laughs> this guy is a pirate and he's an admiral and he wants to join. Now here's the thing, we are looking at using an admiral um, here in the short term. We're, look we're looking at using an admiral, we still have to clear out a bunch of stuff, and he'll bring a fleet with him too. So it's actually not bad, but it would put us over our cap. That's the main concern. But it is, it's a renowned paragon, like it's kind of, you don't want to not hire him. So I think we'll pick him up. We don't have to fire G.E. Toe or anything, but we are going to have to put him to use to justify the cost. Let's enlist him. Three pirate ships and Lysator are added to the Empire. He's a privateer, not a pirate. And and we're hiring him for defense. You know, we, we want to make sure... That we stay independent and free for all people to find safe harbor on our shores. Ready to steal from the tyrants and share the spoils, eh? My crew's itching for some raiding. <laughs> Alright then. We have a privateer fleet. Let's check it out. They've got some raiders. These are Reaver and Dagger class ships. This is a um, a ship that has a medium mass driver as well as a small mass driver. Not really any special technology coming with it. And a couple of these Dagger classes that have actually less technology than what we have. So, so the, the ships themselves are not great. We can upgrade, I think, the two Corvettes into what we have now. And, and we, we shall. But more importantly, we have him as the leader of it. And in fact, what we'll do, we're going to merge the second fleet into the privateer fleet so that the rest of the ships will gain the benefits. You do some Diablo returns and getting replaced, danced with, and... <laughs> You're not replaced, you just, you know, got some, some help helping you out there. Construction complete. Oh, okay, this was the the anomaly that Elias was looking into at the shipyard. While conducting their survey, the, the detected the remains of an automated shipyard in orbit. It is at least a thousand years old and seems to have been subjected to a heavy missile barrage. But one of its manufacturing bays is still in working condition. Science Officer Elias is confident that power can be restored to the shipyard, but it would require, but it would be a significant project. Interesting, we can repair the shipyard. Situation updated. This is gonna require not a scientist, but a construction ship. We just so have to happen to have one in the neighborhood. So he's gonna go check that out.
Our fleets have merged. We're going to upgrade the two daggers to have better lasers. Oh. Ilix Prime, this is our, our relic world. Established factions and fledgling movements alike have taken an unusually keen interest in our new colony on Ilix Prime. From the moment we announced settlement of this modest planet... It's not a modest planet, it's an amazing planet! Nearly every political voice on the Druskish Enlightened Kingdom has had something to say about it. Our analysts don't suspect that anything truly radical is taking root on Elix Prime, but they advise some caution. It's clear our various political entities intend to campaign vigorously on this burgeoning world. We could say interesting. And for 10 years, there's a shift chance for the population to shift ethics. Now, if we had multiple factions that didn't agree... That would be a danger thing because then they might go to a opposing faction that's always angry. There's not really civil wars or that much internal conflict, but you do have people, if they're unhappy, they're unproductive. So this is sometimes bad, but not so bad on our game. Or I could say the risks are too great. Bolster security. And I could basically, you know, bring in the troops here. Lowering unity, but gaining gov the existing ethics attraction to keep it going and gain stability. I think it's clear that's not who we are. So we're going to let them do what they do. Now, one thing to point out, as far as ethics go, just because we are pacifists doesn't necessarily mean we value individual liberty. Not to say I wouldn't, but that's actually a separate stat. That is actually the egalitarian uh, stat. That we don't have. Uh, that that's that one opposes the authoritarian stat. We just we didn't pick one or the other on that spectrum. So so we're kind of indifferent on the the individual liberty front. So these guys having their say isn't something that we're particularly worried too much about on either one. But we finished terraforming, or the the ability to terraform. Wonderful. Okay. New techs. So, this is an interesting one. Gene clinics. My understanding of gene clinics is this is kind of a noob trap. What it does, it's a building on your planet that gives two jobs. The pops, when they work those jobs, provide the planet with each one a 5% growth increase pop growth speed making a 10 percent total as well as if you are cloning they'll increase the rate of that uh because of our ethics they'll give extra amenities planet habitability there's a few things it's actually been buffed recently but my understanding is it still is kind of a new trap because those two pops that are giving you pop growth are they themselves something that you had to grow to get right so to, for that 10% boost to overcome the two that are not doing something else, and in fact are doing this, takes like 50 years. <laughs> and so most of the time the game is that people say don't pick it. So I wanted to voice that because I'm probably going to pick it. <laughs> Because my view is this is still early game. We're 30 years in. The game can go 200 years, right? 300 years, whatever. Whatever you want to go. And uh, we're going to have time for that to pay off. And we've got a lot of planets that I'd like to see more population on. So, yes, it is a bad call, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. Super long term, it might be a good call. Okay. This is our species that we've been doing. I've already read it once. I'm going to skip it. But we have um, finished indoctrinating the society. So when the month rolls over, we'll see just how effective we are. Anomaly. I wonder if we got rid of the authoritarian and made them more something else. Cargopod. Elias found a small cargo pod that's been left to drift in space above this gas giant. It's been captured by the planet's gravity well. Here it is. 
and will eventually be pulled into the atmosphere. Well, we, you know, obviously, we've got to check that out. Have at it. Anomaly found. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Yamal system. This is Cardella. Cardella. Way up here. Check it out. Back to the cargo pod. The discarded cargo pod was left by someone in the upper atmosphere of Magum 5 long ago. It has somehow escaped notice of other spacefarers in its decaying orbit means it would have lost its been lost in the gas giant's crushing atmosphere within another few years. When the crew of the Sojourner unsealed the pod, they found a stash of alien jewelry made out of precious metals. Huh. Well, we can melt them down. That would give us some alloys. Not bad. But sell them. Good amount of, of energy. We could study them, or just plain keep them. Now, we haven't really been using the, the artifacts, so I think we don't need to keep them. I'm leaning towards study. Um, alternatively, the alloys is interesting, and the energy. So if we were to buy roughly 225 alloys, to buy 250, it would cost us 1,400 energy. So the alloy is a little bit better deal than the energy. 1,000 energy, 225. So we could do that. But I think I'd rather do the science. I, I feel like we're very behind in science. Oh, baby Drewski leveled. Our System crown prince. Complete. Now he's a scientist. These are veteran traits to go along with his analyst. Remember, basically his job is, is essentially to hang back and research things. We can lower his upkeep amount um, by 25%. It won't apply when he's on the council. And if he ever has to inherit the throne, it won't help us at all because he'll be on the council. Civil engineer. If he assists research, planetary build speed on that planet increases... That's nice. He is going to probably be assisting research, but build speed I'm not too worried about. Salvager. Sublight speed for the ship? 5%. System effects. When debris is scavenger research in the system, there's 10% chance to actually salvage a ship itself. We are about to clear some stuff. There might be some debris. Interesting. Or collaborator, better efficient on the research itself. I think that's the way to go. This one's exciting because we're about to get a couple, but that 10%, we're not we're not expecting to be at war where we're going to have multiple tries. Like, it's just a handful of tries, and then it's gone. And I don't even know if we can salvage a drone. It might have to be an enemy fleet. So with that in mind, we're going to go Collaborator. Because he's going to be, like, over on this artifact world studying things. So our construction ship's heading up to repair shipyard. We had a signal. I might admit that I forgot which one this was. Cardella was researching a signal. It succeeded in isolating a signal embedded in the unusual pattern of interference in the Yamal system. The signal is a song. A complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation to be precise, and one that science officer Cardella cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity interfere, infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside our galaxy. So, uh, somebody sent a song from another galaxy to us. Curious. Got some science.
when we finish this armor, we'll upgrade our ships and we'll work on clearing out those uh, mining corporations or mining a uh, core, the mining drones. Oh, it is connected, isn't it? Oh no. It's not terrible. Okay, so our one construction ship is working on the project. We're having the other one build the next thing. And oh no, they're at it again. The Scanurians, our neighbors, are claiming more land. This time they claim the Asla. And they, so they now have claimed all three of these. If we go to war, they're really insistent. Anomaly found. One of the small moonlets orbiting this gas giant have been identified as a promising mining site. A more thorough survey will have been conducted, will have to be conducted to determine whether a mining operation would be feasible. That's a promising moon. Check it out. How is the fleet? We did just almost double. We are now considered equivalent. And if it is a defensive war, we could have the added bonus of our space station, which not only is um, considered a 1.3, it's a bastion at 1.3k. Um, we could, if we had the, the free resources, we could actually build defense platforms to go with it. And this is where it gets interesting. A few def defense platforms are actually pretty, pretty worthless. They're, they're, when they die, it's expensive. They, they do die and then you have to replace them. But if you build it right, oh, Clarity, thanks for the follow. If you, if you build it right, you can actually have dozens upon dozens if not almost a hundred or so of these defense platforms and this thing can be completely insurmountable as a fortress um with those so we could do that if we felt like we were really threatened but because he's in a, f a federation that we have association status with i really feel like they can't attack us at least not without first breaking that off it might be a false sense of security, but I'm going to lean into it because we are pacifist. Hmm. Give me while I chew. The excavation is going well. Archaeologists excavating the hunting lodge have stumbled upon several references to a legendary Retrex warrior known only as the Huntress. She was apparently their most efficient killer, renowned through the domain for having personally butchered thousands of aliens at Macvel. It's unclear whether this is based on fact or fiction, but according to the Retrex legend, the Huntress was killed somewhere inside the valley when she was outwitted by an alien prey she was pursuing. She was supposedly wielding the fabled Blade of the Huntress at the time. Curious. Continue your excavation. A more detailed scan of one of the many natural satellites orbiting the gas giant. Roman III has revealed a deposit of precious metals and minerals that were overlooked on the initial survey. Although the moon is very small, it has a stable orbit around its primary and all appears tectonically stable. An excellent find. Extra energy there. I'll take it. If we can get there. Research complete. There's the armor. Okay. Pausing the game. The Lost Building Methods. This is the next thing we picked up from our little buddies. So this is a, a really nice thing. It, it's a 0.25 extra Envoy. We combine it with the other 0.5. We still don't have an Envoy. But it would give us a reduction in Empire size from Districts. Currently, Districts are 10 of our 141 Empire size. Districts are not our major expense, but it would reduce it by 30%. 
districts themselves though which are pretty expensive uh would be reduced by 30 percent so for example when we built this uh city district that cost 500 minerals to build that city district here same with uh, industrial districts are 500 the other ones are three every district for like the rest of the game would be 30 percent less that would be quite the savings but it does cost fifteen thousand. And it will stick around. Very good. So the glowy yellow border means that these stick around. And this is spe specifically because they were unlocked by an event, not because of something else. So the other ones, the top two, these ones get re-rolled. Now of them, they're pretty nice. These are like starter ones that we should have had long ago. This gives them 10% mining station output. We've already commented several times. Our stations are doing a lot of, of the heavy lifting for our resources. So this would be very nice and it's very cheap resource wise like research wise 500 is not bad we could also get a building that increases mining production on planets we do actually have a, a mining planet or two so we could benefit from that but i think it's less urgent because we're generating a good amount of mining similarly the deep core mining minerals for miners uh we don't necessarily need it right now it's good to have the debate is going to be do we pick up starhold the tech is almost completely done and if we get it, we're actually starting to get to where we have the alloys. And we could put defense, like upgrade our defenses here just in case. And our neighbor to the north, he's hostile. We don't know for sure if he'll stay hostile, but he's starting out hostile. This might be a appropriate choice, even if it's not the most efficient choice. So the best choice probably is the mining station output right now, followed up by the, the building materials. But uh, I think, given our situation, I want to get the Starhold. I want to feel a little bit more secure. And it's almost, it'll be almost a, you know, instant thing, because we had so much of it researched already from the event. Yeah, here's our mining plat station. So what this would mean, if we had that building, every miner is currently making six, and, uh, six minerals. That building would make every miner make seven. It would get plus one mineral for every miner, and we would have a lot of miners. Each one of these squares is two miners apiece. Um, so that, you know, double that number for how many miners. But uh, for the moment, we're not doing it. I, because they're down to one housing, one job, I'm going to go ahead and build an extra mine. These aren't really required, but it's like you know, burning a hole in our pocket here. System survey complete. Okay, we continue on. We need to know what's out here in case there's another bottleneck or something we're going to claim. We Most likely, we're going to get... If we can get Horsham, we'll try to get Magrum and then kind of call it a day. But we'll see what's out here. Construction complete. Delight of the unknown. As we begin to pick up more and more visual images of the aliens known as the, known as the Kaf aliens, it was inevitable that these would be eventually leaked to the wider public. Their appearance has proven delightful to the Druskish public, who are now impatient to make closer acquaintance with these aliens. Of course we are. We love aliens. They're still hostile. <laughs> so, unclear on whether this is for the best, but we're going to try. Alright, we're going to build at least something while we wait for our influence to, to be built back up. But we've still got a few jumps to go. They haven't claimed it yet. All right, this is our construction ship. It successfully restored power to the automated shipyard. The facility immediately resumed its interrupted construction order using what materials it had on hand to build an advanced frigate of unknown design. Unfortunately, the ancient facility broke down completely afterwards and has been deemed beyond repair. We have sent a crew to the new ship and pressed it into service with our fleet. Excellent! And oh, look at this! 
We have two spots available in our private fl privateer fleet. You will do nicely. So yeah, our new ship, uh, it's actually pretty great. Unlike the privateer fleet, this thing has some, some power to it. So it's got uh, an upgraded hyperdrive, upgraded computer, scanners, thrusters, power, level 4 lasers instead of level 2. It has a proton launcher. It's, it's a torpedo boat. So this little frigate, which is about the size of a corvette, is designed to take out uh, cruisers and battleships. It also has level 4 shields, level 3 armor. We need to still upgrade our other armor. This is great. Speaking of, though, ship designer... Our Corvettes have automatically gotten the latest armor upgrade. Still can't put the cloaking field on. And so we shall give the order for everyone to upgrade. And then the mission will be to take out those aliens. Agenda ready. Ooh. This was us expanding the council. So we are finally able to get a fourth member on the council. There it goes. Is it? Oh no. Oh no, it is lost. No, it's already claimed. We just didn't have the scanner there to see it. No. We're still going to try to get up there. Maybe we can claim the other three planets. That's horrible, but maybe. Alright, we have a new spot. Maybe it'll go rogue. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try. We have a new spot on the council. We can pick what that spot is going to be. Do we want a Lord Chancellor or the Grand Storyteller? These are both tied to our civics. And so the Grand Storyteller... Whoever fills the spot, every level that they have, increase ethics attraction and all leader experience gain. This chancellor increases the counselor experience gain. I think we want all the leaders to gain, even though it's 2% per level. And then when we finally have a fifth slot, we'll do our chancellor for the 3% for all five chancellors. So I think we'll do this. Then we get to fill the role. Now, of our, of our people here, we could assign not Gurner for the mineral gain, or we could assign Cardella, who, who is the spark of genius with the research. And I, he's also level two, so we get a little bit more out of the Grand Storyteller. Because of that, and because of the research, I'm gonna favor that. I'm not worried about minerals right now. I feel like research needs the help. We'll put him on the council. Oh, and we need to pick a new agenda. You'll allow it. You might get the next spot. We'll see. Or this one will die off because he's older than you are. <laughs> Higher purpose this time. So we need to pick a new agenda. We could pick something to increase trust and diplomatic weight. Uh, spiritual ethics and happiness. Overall unity. That's actually very strong. We might be picking that. Immigration, trade, and xenophile. We can reorganize the council. This will let us pick a different one instead of the Grand Storyteller. That We don't need to worry about that. Or lower border friction, increase trust cap, pacifist ethos, and uh, lowering naval capacity. Now, we could actually potentially do this to make these guys not upset with us. And it looks like everyone that we meet would uh, gain 75 trust. So if we're worried about these guys, I think this would be... Potentially the best way. Yeah, Gito, you're you're probably on your last legs there. Um potentially this might be our best way to stay at peace. Whereas the evolving society would be our best gain. Uh move to gain, you know, things. It'd be a 40% increase on our unity. Which the unity is actually 111. We're just spending 30 of it. Unity sounds real nice. Let's hope that we could just, you know, keep keep them as, as friends. Now, the border friction, the more points of contact you have with somebody, the more border friction happens. 
we lost the, the bottleneck. Horsham would have given us a one point of border friction with them up there at uh, Seinevis. Best case scenario now is we claim these three. Now we have three points of contact. That is a lot of border friction. So we might really benefit from it. Player Teeth is pointing out, yeah, we would have Star Holds. The problem is we won't have the bottleneck on these luxury choices. The Tundra and the Megastructure, we want to have them. We want to claim them. We'd have to put a Stronghold on all three. Clearly, the, the bottleneck at the, tr the Truth Sayer would be the main Stronghold. To defend all three would be inefficient. You can only have so many star bases. So likely, these things would be undefended, and we'd have to use our fleet. The easiest thing would just be keep them at peace. Now, the problem with the border friction thing is that's eventually going to go away. It only lasts for 10 years, and then we'll be back at war. Whereas the unity, whatever we gain, we're going we're gonna to keep. So we're going to risk it. We want to, to push forward with the unity. Right now, our unity tree is actually diplomacy. So maybe by gaining unity, we can gain friends. Right? Trust growth right here. Maybe we can make them friends through unity as well. Oh! I think this is our neighbors. They translated us before we could do them. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Diplomatic channels are now open, and all hostilities between us have ceased for the moment. There it is. It's another collective consciousness. We're the, the Raxicodium multitude, and we speak as one. The hive mind has taken note of your presence. We will observe for now. Our future actions will depend on whether you are a threat, an opportunity for expansion, or an unforeseen variable. We are absolutely going to try to do the peaceful, nothing but friends approach. First contact aborted. There's the borders. There they are. We're going to immediately try to improve relations. And actually, we can have the, our other guy. I think we're done with the spy network on our little buddies. Actually, well, what are they doing? Hi, awareness. We could reveal our presence to them. Plant advanced, advanced knowledge. We can't spend the... We're not doing anything with that right now. Influence is all important. He has his construction ship in position. Very scary. System survey complete. Cardellet leveled up. We can get more alloys, but I think we're going to do the... 3% from, it was 6, now it's, it was 3, now it's 6, uh, research across the Empire. Research complete. Starhold complete. So the top two re-rolled. We can now get better missiles. We can get strike craft. You can have fighters, you can build hangar bays, things like that. Not leaning that way just yet. No, you can't trade for influence. Influence is the hardest resource to get in the game, pretty much. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, this one going here. Because the sooner we get it, the faster the, the district cost gets reduced. It's going to be a long time. Wow, we have very little science, it looks like. They close their borders. Our strike craft a valid option. I will be completely honest, even though I've played the game a whole lot, I from the beginning of the game, strike craft have been awful, and so I just never build them. And I know that they did a complete combat rework. Same with missiles. And uh They're supposed to be different now, better now. They have a role, but at the beginning of the game and for the last five years they've been awful, and so I just don't even build them. And that could be a mistake. But you can build carriers. You can build cruisers with strike craft, battleships with strike craft, make them carriers. Um, I think there are valid builds for it. I just don't do it myself because it's never something I really did before. But these guys close the borders. That's not a good sign. 
They're harming our relations. Not a good sign. Let's, uh... We've got a good amount of food. Sometimes, hive minds, they they use food as a, as a resource more. So I'm just curious. If we gave them a chunk of food here... Yes, passive empires can declare rivalry, but it costs us... Uh, I don't know if it costs an influence or not, but it, it's not good. <laughs> I mean, we want them to be friends. Uh, if I did declare rivalry, I'm not going to click it right now because I think it I think it goes to a confirmation screen, but I'm not sure. If I go to our policies, okay, it would have been. I was thinking of this cooperative stance. Uh, we're gonna shortly, we're gonna switch our diplomatic stance from expansionist, which is reducing the outpost build cost to cooperative and that's going to lower the border friction um and give us extra diplomatic weight so we're going to we're going to do that shortly but we're trying to get uh trying to get there first anomaly found an anomaly would require extensive probing could garner a substantial find sure ships upgraded okay they took the deal We'll see if that uh, bears fruit. The, the hope is that they don't continue to harm our relations. Looks like our fleet... There's the extra ship that we're trying to get from... That we got from the... Uh, I'm running out of words today. The uh, construction yard there. He's coming down south. We can meet him up north. And we'll start fighting some mining drones. Thank you. Automated shipyard. Aha! An embassy! I do not know if this is specifically because we just bribed them, but it probably didn't hurt that they are willing to do an embassy. That's going to help our relations quite a bit. Okay, technology. Our survey speed. So I call game to get that. Clearly we're going to do a science thing. Uh, we can get all research stations to increase by 10%, or specifically our physics researchers by 20%. Let's have a look. If I click this and go to our physics, it tells us that stations account for 9 of our 81 research. Jobs account for 62 of our 81 research. Clearly, increasing the jobs will give us the bigger out output. Just wanted to show the, the way that we figured that, out, that one out. There are some games where you have absolute crazy amounts of science coming from stations, like all these little exploration things. Hey, they opened their borders. They opened their borders. That's a good sign. Very good. Teachings of explorers. This was the anomaly that we just found out. We're reporting that they found something spectacular on Heka 2 Alpha. On the surface lies traces. Here it is. Lie traces of an explorative expedition of another civilization. Left behind are some well-preserved documents and artifacts. The proposed action by science, Chief Science Officer Elias is to send the text findings to our homeworld for translation. There's also the possibility to sell them to a private investor. If we send it to our homeworld, we would get a special project to translate. Or we could sell it for 2,000 energy and 500 uh, resources there. Consumer goods. I think it's clear we want to learn about our alien friends. Situation They're like us. They're explorers. Construction complete. Okay, next star base going up. We found wreckage of an archaic spaceship with an unusual design. We're not quite sure how its propulsion system works. Check it out, and you got a level, Elias. 
Elias is already an explorer. Every time he surveys, we get unity. If he's an observer, whenever he surveys, he could also have a 5% chance to add a research deposit discovery. Now, here's the problem. We might not get any of these places that he's exploring. If we get cut off here, we might not get it. That would be sad. Tuner. We could have him at 25% faster speed or insightful. This would just give us, whenever he finishes an anomaly, which he's working on one right now, it would give us a month's worth of research every time. He's doing one right now. It would be 80, you know, it'd be the uh, the 200 research basically every time he does one. I think that's a no brainer because we, we don't know if we'll get the resources. And if we do, it's probably a deposit of two, three, four resource science. That would be hard pressed to catch up for the hundreds that we get from this. Yeah, a month of research for each one. And if we do get to level that up, by the way, it, there's a level two version of it. And it'd be three months of research. I don't know if we'll get that far. I don't know if there'll be that many anomalies for him to find left in the galaxy. Yeah, so he's doing a level 2 anomaly right now. And it's saying it's only 50 days, so 2 months. There are times, though, where you'd have an anomaly that's 500 days, 1,000 days. Depends on the difficulty. This one's a, an easy relative difficulty because he's a high-level scientist. And so it's not bad. He's just, he's out there doing the job. On solar sails, we found the wreckage. The arcade. Oh, this was the spaceship. Unusual design. Instead of using propulsion similar to that of modern ships, the craft relied on large sails unfurled in the vacuum of space. Presumably, the ship harvested solar energy and drifted on the solar winds created by starlight. We should dig deeper. Create message in a bottle. Archaeological site. Right there. Now we really want to get over there to find out what we can learn from the message in a bottle. No! Our neighbors suddenly closed their borders and declared us a rival. Why? I think um, our bribe helped out, but over time, the, the positive relations runs out, and now we're settling back down to where they would have, where we would have been, and now it's bad, it's negative. I could keep trying to bribe them, but you can only get so much out of it, and we don't we only have so many resources. Like I don't know. Anomaly found. Signs of battle. A large amount of ship debris can be found in orbit around this planet. Possibly the remnants of some kind of massive fleet action. And this is Elias, who gets us research every time he does an anomaly, so absolutely. Now we could return the rivalry. We we could, but that would actually further lower relations. So there's a problem there. Like we could potentially get the land by making them our enemy. <laughs> the tropic world though. We're going to get that right now. Yeah, we have no intel on these guys. In fact, we're going to start getting some. All right. Clear evidence. A massive space battle took place in close orbit of Heka 1 at some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface on one side of the planet is pockmarked with craters from stray weapon blasts. And scans from the Sojourner, Sojourner have picked up a several hulks on the ground. Though these wrecked ships are all in very poor condition, the fact that anything remains at all after the damage they must have sustained is a testament to their advanced design. Science Officer Elias is preparing for an expedition to sift through these derelict holes for any valuable technologies. 
A graveyard expedition. Situation All right, sir. If you are used to playing Stellaris, uh, might I recommend you learn your, your hotkeys. Elias here had a order already to scan this system, as well as the next. I had already told him to on a queue. I want him to do this one before he moves on. Control shift doesn't just add something to the queue, it adds it to the top of the queue. And so he's he, he's doing that first. Control shift. How are relations with the Southern Empire? Um Tense. These guys have decided we are their rival. But because they're in a federation that we have an association status with, they don't have a choice. They have to be peaceful. Yeah, it's a nice hotkey. I'm very glad that I've kind of memorized that one. System Ooh. survey complete. Okay. We can form a federation if we want. Now the problem is, the only people that like us enough to make a federation are already in one. So that's not an emergency. And the further one down is once you're in a federation, you can increase how much fleet the federation has united. But over here, three unity for every embassy. We've got a half dozen embassies. And trust growth, trust cap, and this diplomatic acceptance along with envoys improving relations can gain favors, this might just be the pathway to force these guys to be our friends, whether they like it or not. Yeah, the hive minds, yeah. They won't necessarily get along with us there either. So we're going to do the networking, which should jump this up uh, when the month rolls over, from 87 to maybe 90-something. We've got a, a good number of, of on, envoys, because uh, embassies, because these guys are a bunch here. Uh oh. I do think a hive mind will join. I do think so. I don't remember for sure. Ilix Prime, once again, our relic world has something going on. Strange occurrences have been reported among the colonists on Ilix Prime. Apparently, many individuals have taken to dancing in the streets for hours and even days on end, refusing to stop until they are physically restrained. So far, it has only affected a relatively small portion of the population, and our authorities have yet to establish a pattern. Well, I guess just. Modern to her the situation then. Keep an eye on that. Okay, where's the rest of our fleet? There it is. Waiting to take on these guys. Open for the influence. The Dancing Plague. We're back at it. The isolated incidents of spontaneous, prolonged dancing on Ilix Prime have escalated somewhat, and groups of hundreds of Druskites are now compulsively dancing in a variety of different styles. Surprisingly, even those who have never shown much interest in dancing are suddenly able to perform expert moves, and the old among them have been rediscovered the, have rediscovered the vigor of their youth. Although many residents are jokingly referring to it as the Dancing Plague, it is no joking matter. The dancers show no concern for their bodily needs and risk dancing themselves to death. We could say this is not natural. We must find out what is afflicting them or start the music. It's party time. <laughs> now, just because we are, we like aliens and we're peaceful and we're spiritual doesn't necessarily mean that we want our people dancing to death. Gurner is skeptical that this that this is something that we would want to have. Now it says, strange events. It says that for six months, people are happy, amenities are bonus. It's got some good things. It says, or it just it's not natural. We need to find out more. That seems the more prudent option. Perhaps we will do that. Situation log updated. It's going to cost a thousand research. It takes us about seven months. But we'll figure it out. And get to the bottom of this. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Conflict! What is it good for? A war has broken out on Exquis 4. In recent years, certain factions on the planet managed to accrue enough wealth to monopolize the means of production. I thought these guys were unified. In turn, others revolted against the growing inequality. Now, an all-out class war has broken out. It's probably because they were unified. In a dark, It is a dark time for Exodus 4. This will have lasting consequences. Well, we're going to remain impartial in their political affairs. It's the only choice we have. Hands-off approach. We're going to gain more in, in, insight progress and a bunch of science. Hopefully they don't wipe themselves out. It's been known to happen. Our fleets have almost joined. The surface of this asteroid is littered with metallic debris. Most of it appears to originate from starships of many different de designs. Well, check it out. Special project complete. The team under Elias, this is the other one, has finished their exploration of Heka 1 and returned to the Sojourner. Thankfully, the Starship Graveyard on the surface proved to be a technological treasure trove. Studying the remains of these vessels has advanced our research in certain fields by several years, and there are things yet to discover. A permanent science outpost in orbit would be a great boon to our Starship engineering efforts. So we gained a ton of engineering, Elias gained experience, and three engineering on the planet permanently. They're not atomic yet, right? I know that I don't think they're atomic yet, but they're in the industrial age. Machine age. Air travel. Yeah, they're they're basically early 20th century. Nope, oh, the war is over. After we chose not to involve ourselves with their politics, the war on Exodus ended of its own accord. The oppressive power steamrolled the revolutionaries with ease. The status quo has been restored. The revolution is dead. And a population has died. Wow. Okay. Our sensors have discovered that the ship remnants on that asteroid got there in a peculiar way. The ship seems to have been in intentionally driven straight into the asteroid probably from light years away, to test the accuracy of the designer's thrusters. As we deep scan the remains, we pick out one ship in particular, which seems to have reasonably intact propulsion. We could recover that thruster and actually gain the afterburner technology, or not waste the alloys, and this location will have a permanent plus three to alloy. Now that's not insignificant, that's a 10% alloy increase, but we have to get up there. We have to actually get to it. Or we can get afterburners now. Now eventually we'll get afterburners. But to not have to research it seems quite nice. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna get the afterburners. Research complete. So this is something we could put on our ships. We just our ships are already Um they're not in position for it right now. This would be instead of having a, a cloaking device, we'd have the afterburners. Okay, here comes our frigate joining the privateer fleet, and then we're going to move out. Special project complete. Yeah, there's a risk we'll never get the system, exactly. The Dancing Plague! The pathogen is isolated! Our researchers have succeeded in isolating the cause of the dancing incidents on Elix Prime. It appears the culprit is a gas released by local vegetation. This gas induces feelings of exhilaration. Exhilaration, an irresistible urge to dance while suppressing fatigue. It seems to be fairly benign. However, as the colonists' self-preservation instincts prevent them from literally dancing themselves to death. Uh, furthermore, our scientists have developed a synthetic gas that, once released into the air, will neutralize the effects of the dancing gas. Local entrepreneurs suggest that we preserve the unique character of the colony by allowing the gas free reign in certain areas, providing a safe space for young and old alike to experience the Eternal party of Ilix Prime. Others point out that the gas has certain valuable properties we can make use of if we can extract it from the plants before it's released into the air. The show must go on, or we can exploit this to the full. Now, both of these will give us the ability for a gas extraction well. What we're talking about here is actually the strategic 
resource of exotic gases. The specific resource we actually needed to put cloaking devices on our ships. That would have meant that would mean that we could actually have cloaking devices on our ships once we get that going. But cloaking is really just a gimmick. It's not actually good. <laughs> so we don't really need it. And each of these does give us um each of these does give us some. This one would be one gas well, this would be two gas wells and unity. Uh not nearly as much unity as that looks like. We're we're actually 110 unity now. So this is about 8 months worth. But this would give us a 15% growth speed on our most important planet in our empire. A size 25 relic world. And I mentioned, yeah, I've mentioned before, growth speed is pretty much the most important stat. So I think the party must go on. We'll find gases in other places too. And Dutchie's leveled up. He is now our head of research. We could make him a intellectual, which would put on his planet, which our capital, researchers would get a bonus. We could give uh, worker pops a bonus. Or artisans and metallurgists use less minerals. I, I think we do the researcher. Our capital is is doing research as well as, our, as this place, so I think that'll be good. Okay, we're almost there. Can we get to the megastructure? Cardellet found. Optical sensors isolate a cluster of shapes on the barren surface of Uralin 2 that could be buildings. Okay, that's a longer one, but we'll check it out. Our intel is growing, by the way. This is why individual planets are starting to pop up, because we have a, sci a spy in their empire. Not Gurner has leveled. We could further increase this environmental engineer trait, which would mean he'd be better at, like we'd, we'd save an additional 10% on all those blockers. But again, once we've cleared the blockers, unless we want to transfer him to every planet and clear the blockers with that, which you can, I, it's annoying. Uh, I'd rather probably just have the trade value go up. And he's not currently a counselor, so we won't be able to get, get the mineral benefit. So I think we'll do the trade. We're not really getting much trade from that planet either, but eventually we might. Oh, our fleet's done. We're going to send it in. Construction complete. The other one's not here yet. So you hang out for a second. There we go. All right. Now we've geared our fleet to specifically be focused on anti-armor, no anti-shields, because we know these guys don't have shields. We wish they would make governor traits work sector-wide. Agreed. Agreed. The level of the governor affects the sector, but not the traits. Woo! Construction complete. Pretty lights. Battle results. Zero losses. That's actually, yeah, that's, that's zero losses. Odd that it doesn't show all of their ships lost. Well done. Well done. There is now debris that will want to research. Currently, our scientists are a little bit busy. We get a little bit of time to, before that's an emergency. The archaeological site might actually be done soon. We're going to continue on, take out all these drones. Research complete. There's the gene clinics. 
We have six of these dense jungles, but I'm going to get the unity buff. All game long, extra unity seems okay. Anomaly found. Elias. Ancient Precursor Civilization. We have only found one. We need this. It is long. But Elias will give us research when he finishes too. We're going to do it. Yeah, we're getting 4.3. We were like 3.3 before we built the fleet back up. So I'm pleased with that. It's just for the... In for the uh, influence of us getting up here. Like, this was a long journey. We were down here when we decided we needed to rush this. So, we've actually, technically, we got to Vermilion. That's, that's primary objective complete. We got the bottleneck. Now we're trying to get bonus objectives. Alien Barracks. This is Cardilla. Yes. Uh, the silhouettes discernible from orbit are indeed buildings, and closer inspection revealed them to be of an obvious material nature. While abandoned for some time, the very recently on galactic timescale, Science Officer Cardella believes that secrets of alien tactics may yet be exhumed from beneath the dust that covers the decaying barracks and looted armories. A special project may be issued to study the remains. We could say yes and have the barracks there, or that this outpost is dead and that it's dead and buried speaks volumes. Now, this is an interesting choice here. Normally, I go for the special product, project. But we have been talking at length on just how desperate we are for influence. And the fact that this military outpost is dead speaks volumes. I think we do that. It might make the difference of us getting this megastructure. That could be enough. Get moving. This is something I hadn't really talked about much. But this system has an L gate. We don't know what it leads to, but it's an endpoint of an obscure tangle of substates roots, otherwise inaccessible from normal space. It's not a Stargate, it's an L gate. And so by getting up here, we will be claiming the L gate. Perhaps, perhaps we'll find out what its use is for. I think we are going to prioritize the megastructure over the planet. What type of planets do these guys like? Yeah, they like arid worlds, so, so they might not prioritize the tundra world as much. Aha! The blade of the huntress! This is, this is our archaeological site. After painstakingly combing through the Valley of Macbell for any trace of the legendary Huntress, archaeologists were finally able to pinpoint her last resting place. Her fossilized skeleton was found locked in battle with the remains of a lone, large horned anthropod, with her claws still clasping at the hilt of a perfectly preserved sword. This must be the blade of the Huntress. The weapon is composed of an unknown material and is sharp enough to cut straight through our strongest armor. We have found the relic, the blade of the Huntress. We actually have the legendary blade as part of our collection. This blade gives a passive effect empire-wide. 25% morale to our army. Two to our planetary sensor range. We can detect ships from farther away if we have a planet near the border. 10% diplomatic weight. Even at peace, this bears weight. But then, at the cost of 3,000 unity on a 10-year cooldown, we can activate the Blade of the Huntress. Lasting for 10 years, it would give us a 25% boost to sublight speed. Yeah, that's the 3,000 unity. That's just the active effect. The passive effect are here at all times. We, we For the rest of the game, we now have the morale, the sensors, and the diplomatic weight. But if we need to get somewhere fast, we can turn on this Blade of the Huntress 
and have a sublight speed of 25%. That's our speed of traveling between hyperlanes. So when a ship enters a system from here, it has to travel from here to there before it can then exit the system. So it has a spin up, tr spin up time for the, the hyperdrive to go along the lane and the sublight drive going between the planets. That sublight is actually the longer of the two. So sp speeding up your ships is very important. In a war situation, we turn this on and we get a big advantage. While we're here, let's discover this precursor insight. We're still trying to collect all those insights, and this we just got enough artifacts to do so. Analysis of the minor artifacts suggests there may be a precursor connection on or near Taprib 4. So there's a new archaeological special project there. It can wait. First, Baby Drewski is going to check out the, the debris. And our battle is starting up again. Except our privateer is so much faster. GE Toe is a little slow, I think. <laughs> Gotta wait. There you go. Hostile fleet engaged. Construction complete. System survey complete. Pause. Our construction ship finished this. Very good, no losses. Moving on. Actually, no, we did lose one. We lost one Corvette. It's acceptable. Cordellet, strong energy emissions of an unknown origin make this asteroid stand out from the rest of its peers in this crowded asteroid field. Check it out. So this is two smaller groups as opposed to one bigger group. Finish the physics research. Here's that plasma thrower technology that we unlock from the high energy dimension, the dimensional portal. So we could potentially have stronger weapons on our ships. The other options are a little unappealing. The, the improved booster, we won't have room on our ships because either we're doing cloaking or we're doing the, the thrusters and we don't necessarily need the energy from it. The FTL inhibitors is nice. What this means is if we're at a war and an enemy fleet is trying to sneak past here, like technically they don't have to fight the starbase. They could just show up and walk past it and go to the next system, the undefended next system. So this is actually important. It's just not, if you're not at war, you don't get a benefit. But if you do at war, you, you really miss having this. So I think we will do this. Yep, I think we'll do that. So that means that we'll be able to keep them from, from jumping past us. We're going to move in position. We might just get our goal there. That asteroid is an extrasolar capture. It appears to have been washed by some kind of exotic radiation as it plummeted through interstellar space before finally settling in the system. The original source of this radiation remains unknown, but the Von Braun has been able to pick up a wealth of physics data by studying the asteroid's energy emissions. Remarkable. That is a good amount. More things. Dese debris from what must have been a, an orbital installation has been discovered at Evar 2. Artifacts recovered amongst the debris have confirmed this space station served as headquarters for the Erasing Concordant. This is our precursors. As the authority of disease control some 1.2 million years ago, the Erassians were far more susceptible to alien diseases than most known species. And the budget for the Public Health Institute nearly rivaled that of their military. Despite this, surviving records show that their entire species perished from the Javorian pox. Alright, check that out. Anomaly found. All right, there's the home to an exquisite impact crater. However, something breaks the visual uniformity in one of the larger craters. So there's something over there. Got to check it out too.
we are losing because we didn't get our ship's chance time to repair we are starting to lose some so we've, we've lost uh three corvettes four corvettes there but that was the last of the mining drones so they can go home and before i forget let's upgrade the star hold as well as our home base because it's a trade station And our starbase here. They were in the way. We'll research the debris and then we'll research the systems. Call yourself a pacifist. They, yes. They were they were aggressive towards us. They uh they were threatening innocent travelers. And so in the name of the greater good, we needed to remove them as a threat. Defending their home, they, they they we we demonstrated that they their programming gone wild. You know, awry, diligent workers, <laughs> Twitch rebels from from the destruction of the the drones. <laughs> Abandoned thrusting in the center of a particularly large. Oh yeah, this was that crater. A cluster of metal shapes, doubtlessly of alien origin. Science Officer Cardellet is convinced that they are massive planetoid mountable propuls propulsion devices intended to push the whole asteroid from its orbit for purposes and destinations unknown. The Von Braun is on standby, its crew ready to begin disassembly and analysis of the alleged propulsion systems with the hopes of improving our own thruster technology. Make it so, we just gained ion thrusters. Very nice. We may look at our ship design here. Level 2 thruster. And we could potentially, in addition, throw on the afterburners. Now, the, the fun part would have been the, the cloaking field. But realistically, there's there's no, no good reason for it unless we want to do a first strike against another empire, which kind of goes against what we're doing. Now, because we're also not necessarily taking on... Um, the drones anymore we're going to switch back to mass driver because if we encounter something with shields the lasers have minus to shield damage so we need something with plus to shield damage to compensate so this is a more balanced design the engines are giving us sublight speed as well as chance to evade the thruster more sublight speed more evade so it should keep our guys alive longer as well given the upgrade order We could actually colonize this arid world with their species there. Or we could terraform it. We need 5,000. Let's let's wait. Unless I can sell... No, we'll wait. I think we'll terraform that to, to a... one of ours. And this here, we won the race... Maybe not the moral victory of getting the, the true bottleneck, but we, we got all of the, the territory we were hoping for. We're going to head here next, get the Tundra World, claim the little constellation. But that was very successful march towards the border. I think we're going to need to call it here. I've gone well past our, my normal time. Still need to do a little bit of family time before all the kids are in bed. But we, we accomplished our goal. We claimed the mega structure. We need to have the technology mega engineering to even have a hope to repair it. But it costs uh, unity. It costs uh, alloys. 15,000 alloys to do. And a lot of story. Story left and right. Absolutely, Gurner. So, meanwhile, you know, the original Gurner died to the matriarch. Yay for story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yay for story. Awesome. Yes, the story of, of original Gurner dying to the, the space whale. There it is. There's your nemesis. 
it actually is like a, a Moby Dick story. There's there's even like the uh, unexploded torpedo lodged in its side. Um, we had some drama with our neighbors. We don't know what to make of our new neighbor. He's rivaling us. It's kind of scary. We've built a fleet. Gito was joined by a pirate. Lots of things happening. But it's been fun. I need to head out. Thanks, everyone. This was a good time. I'm glad you guys were stuck around for it. We've had a good time. Like I said, I'm looking to try to start uh, saving these videos on YouTube so that we can keep the videos longer than Twitch will allow. I don't necessarily see that many people wanting to sit through a six hour video of of us playing this game. If you have, you're amazing if you're ending watching this later. But uh, this is a way for anyone who does want to catch up on the story can do so. And so we'll, we'll see about starting that channel. I'll try to have a link here shortly on our Twitch channel. Tomorrow, uh, if if all goes well, the plan will be a little bit of Mechabellum, a little bit more Stellaris, and in the evening, Baldur's Gate 3. Yep. Thanks, Gito. Thanks, Gurner. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Glad you guys are here. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>